Gonna set up the stream Like I had a dream I was falling through the breaking bad That fellow with the hat He broke really bad He said, Joe, don't mess up all that There's a precipitate You gotta clean off that vase Or whatever that glassware is called but I started streaming and now I am beaming like a sun. And he's just bald. I got that what we're doing. <laughs> this was almost friends in low places. I actually did have a weird dream about breaking bad. What happened in it, Joe? Uh okay, so Jesse and uh Mr. White needed to Mr. Do... White. Yeah, isn't that his name? Yeah. Yeah, Heisenberg. That's what Jesse calls him. Yeah. Um, uh, needed to do something where they were going to be on some sort of, like, scaffold at, like, a university science building, like, like a window washer thing. Yeah. And they, they always are getting up to hijinks like that. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that never happens in the show, but that seems like the sort of thing that would need to happen. Right. right. They need to dress up as window washers in order to, like, get into this university that has this one chemical that they need or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They need some sort of equipment from this university lab, and it's right. like, okay, we go in through the roof. We come down the, 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 the scaffold when the, those guys are on lunch or whatever. We, you know, Right. Um, and they hired me in the dream to make some sort of forged work order or something like that. Okay. So if somebody that like, seems like something you would do if somebody's, for a couple of... If, if somebody's supposed to be up... Yeah, yeah. Um, but then uh, the dream ended up merging with The Walking Dead anyway. Uh, I see. Because it's, it's an dream. AMC it's crossover. An a, it's an AMC crossover episode with Joe Hills. Uh, and um, so, uh, if you're listening, AMC. Yeah, I was like, wow, there's a lot of cops here because they were there to get Walter and Jesse. But there's also like a bunch of CDC guys in suits, and I'm like, well, that's strange. And but, zombies. But either way, yeah. I, I'm like, oh, I'm out of here because I don't want to get arrested with whatever those two idiots were doing. Sure. And then. Um, I hope you got paid for I don't, creating for forging that work order. Well, it sound from the way I understand the way the dream kind of went. It's like they were jumping straight into like zombie apocalypse stuff. Nope, so, so money has money no, is value. no longer any yeah. value. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, and uh, no. So like the um, yeah, the last thing before I woke up was I was trying to help some guy like tie the door of his trailer shut. Because oh, wow. like the locks were like busted out or whatever. Yeah. So that happens. Yeah, that happens. Anyway, good morning, everybody. I hope you had fantastic dreams too. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> in that they are of or related to fantasies. Um, you know what? Usually I, are. Yeah. In some way. Did, did you? They're not to... real, so I guess they're by definition fantastical. Uh, did you have any any wild dreams, Quinn, lately? Uh. uh mm. And I feel like I had one, but I completely forget what it was. I just remember that it was uh, significant and that I remembered it. But now, I, clearly, I don't remember it. Yeah, I we just remember that it happened. Well, if you want to help Quinn be able to afford a proper dream journal, you can commission <laughs> music from Quinn at redactedhills.com. I'm going to pin that. Thank uh, you. I've always wanted a proper dream journal. I just didn't have the finances for it. <laughs> That's what's been holding you back. We are splitting the tips 50-50 on today's stream as well. Tips are welcome via paypal.me slash Joe Hills and YouTube Super Chat. We got a lot of familiar names and faces here today. Hello, faces. Uh, Badger Spanner says, I just came in in the middle of this story and didn't realize this was a dream and thought it was a wild night at no quarter. No, not quite. Uh, we got a lot of familiar folks. Welcome, Mahi Zero, Evan Netta, Marby's Lab, uh, Jenny, Craig Sirota, Schoon, Sealed Mabbit, uh, Geek of Many Topics, Eight Webs, Greasky, Transit Biker, Tanisha, Wyvern's Flight, Koala, Twy Chali, and then uh, Vin Shoken. Glad. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. We uh we have a couple of uh goals, goals. because uh, I figure there's at least one part of my life where the goal should be something other than just baseline survival. Uh, boy, 
uh, what was what was that goal? We had 180. We were gonna have Quinn perform. What was it? Kate Bush's running up that hill. Mm-hmm. And at 360, we were gonna have the Beetlejost perform "Friends in Low Places." Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we have, I'm just putting in a little bit of AFK time over here at this machine, because if you don't spend a few minutes a day over here, it'll never be able to blow itself up. So we're going to wander off from there back toward my base where I'm doing a little bit of mining, a little bit of TNT driven excavation. Hmm. TNT. That's dynamite. TNT. Dynamite. Oh, I actually got to play the ACDC pinball machine at the Pin Ranch oh, yeah. uh, this huh. weekend. That was a lot of fun. Um, oh, I talked to uh, Steve, the guy who ran it. He mm -hmm. said they definitely had capacity. They only had 39 people, and they, they had originally capped it at 42. I see. And he's like, uh, I, I asked him, like, you know, I've got a few few friends or family I might want to bring out here sometime. Like, how yeah, close do you have friends in low places? How, how hard is that capacity cap? Mm. You know, because, like, John uh, is up in Murray, Kentucky, which is, like, 20 minutes away from there. Oh, okay. And I was like, yeah. oh, we could have just driven up and picked John up, and he loves games. He's not necessarily, like, a uh, consummate competitive pinball player but like you put him you in front of almost be. any game and he can he has amazing reflexes right yeah mm. so um yeah steve was saying they could go up to 52 probably without any trouble well because this was kind of a test run right mm -hmm. this was a, this hadn't been done before no this hadn't been done before and, and i warned corinne i was like you know normally when we go play pinball we're like at an arcade or a commercial place like this is an arcade Yes, but it's an arcade people built on their ranch. Mm -hmm. This is like an extension of their home. So, you know, make sure you're on extra good behavior. Right. And uh, You're a guest in their home. Yeah. But, no, they uh, they said Karim was very well behaved. They were very happy. She played uh, with Ender, who's only five. No, six, because he had his birthday during the event. So we were joking, oh, good, we're not going to get beat by a five-year-old anymore. Yeah. You're not going to get beat at Ender's game. No, no. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. So I really hope you come down next time, or I guess out. It's it's more out of town than down from town. Down and out. Yeah, I've been there. But yeah, you know what I haven't seen since I uh, was little. Do you remember going to Bush Gardens and seeing the Clydesdales? Yes, I do. I remember thinking like, wow, those are big horses, and and the thing is though, like when you're a kid, everything, everything is, looks big. Everything's big. Every horse is big. Yeah. Even but, a miniature horse, probably. But yeah, we saw the Clydesdales at this ranch, and they and were they like, really are. they're huge. We're looking at them, and I'm like, those horses, um, the, like, it's it almost looks like an optical illusion. You see, uh -huh. you see the horse on the hill, and you're like, that horse is bigger than it should be, or it's closer than it should be. <laughs> and I can't tell which. It's like, they're just such huge horses. Yes. Yeah. Objects Ob are closer than they or yeah. further than they appear. Uh, yeah. Clydesdales on ranches are larger than they appear. Yes. Uh, hey, thank you to Mir Muse for our first tip of the stream. Tip in five. Let's get that thank on the Thank you, episode. Mir Muse. Mir Muse. We're gonna rotate our camera five degrees. That Mir puts us. That puts, that us, puts closer. us closer. Yeah, I didn't want to interrupt because uh, I was like, oh, Quinn's doing a thing. Am I doing a thing? I mean, you were... I'm doing a thing. Oh, I have a, I have a, a bonus song. Oh, a bonus song. I'd love, to, uh, I'd love to... Is now a good time for you? Yeah, yeah. What's this bonus song? Is this something you wrote yourself? What's some context? Can we have context no, bonus? I didn't, I didn't... Well, now that I think of it, I only know a little bit of it, so I'll just play a little bit of it. Ooh, is it a song that I know a little bit of? Maybe we know different little bits and we can work together like a team. <laughs> you do not seem enthused by that plan. I can't uh, see your that face. That works. <laughs> I can't see your face, but that, there was a very pausey pause there. I'm like, oh, wait, I only know the intro to this song. Kind of like uh, how we feel about the BoJack, the Horseman song. We only know, like, the first half of that song. Yeah. We, only, we maybe only know the first half of this song, but I'll play it anyway. They call me Dr. Worm Good morning, how are you? I'm Dr. Worm I'm interested in things 
I'm not a real doctor, but I am a real worm. I am an actual worm. I live like a worm, and I like to play the drums. I think I'm getting good, but I can handle criticism. I'll show you what I know and you can tell me if you think I'm getting better on the drums. I'll leave the front unlocked because I can't hear the doorbell. That's all we know. Oh, oh, can we talk for a minute about our mom's phone alarm for when she's baking or cooking? E yes, we oh. do need to talk about oh. that. We we went to see my mom. Or our mom. We, uh, sorry, I'm not used to having somebody in the studio. Who has the same who mom. Who has the same mom. Like, I'm not trying to cut you out of the family. I'm just like... <laughs> we, well, they're doing that very nicely themselves. No. Ah! Uh, no, I don't know. They're trying, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh... I'll give them a, some more trial period and see what happens. I mean, you know, you're still invited to things. Being invited and feeling welcome are two different things. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But yes, let's talk about the alarm. Okay, so every time my mom tries to cook something, or like, she'll like be like, oh, I have to flip this over in three minutes, right? She'll right, and she has multiple things going on, so we're we're hearing this alarm like every five minutes or less right yeah it's it's like every three minutes she needs to like flip something over and she's got the alarm but it's set does anyone want to guess what the worst possible alarm on the iphone is that you can use for for doing something in the kitchen i just want to see if anybody can guess which one it is before we yeah before this we is start. one of one of the like defaults you can choose it's, from she doesn't have a special alarm app no it's just it's on the iphone it's just she's just went down the list and chose this one and then claims she couldn't figure out how to change it again uh transit says pinball no no nope. uh wyvern's fight says radar is my least favorite uh oh yeah i need a special tool two i charlie says i assume fire alarm i didn't even know there was a fire alarm one that, did you know that, that oh there is yeah badger says basic ringer not quite. Some a few people said basic phone ringtone. Nope, 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 nope. Not the worst. Uh, Jenny says plates shattering sound. I didn't know that was an option. I didn't know that was an that option. That does seem bad. Yeah. The, I, you know, it would be funnier if that one was plates shattering, but then like the diner full of people like clapping. Clapping afterwards. Yeah, like <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, rooster, sound of a distant baby screaming. I'm pretty sure that's not in the list. <laughs> so, uh, uh, get on it, Apple. Yeah, Apple, make a, make a baby. Distant baby screaming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Leslie tips five. It says, good morning, coffee and sunshine. Thank you, Leslie. Good We're going to rotate that to Leslie. ten. Mahi Zero Wo says Amber Alert. Amber Alert. <laughs> I don't think that's an option. That would be bad. It's not by the seaside, Badger. No. It's not under the sea. Under the sea. Under the sea. Under the sea. Is there a bubble sound alarm? Uh, there is one. It's like... Oh, that, I didn't know that, but that's terrible. Blop, 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 blop. I'm bubbles. Uh, yeah, mm, I don't, Something like that. Nobody, nobody has time for that. That's, I don't have time for that either. That's a terrible alarm. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. Wind, Wind chimes. chimes. No, Wind no. Wind chimes would be pleasing. Vin says, wait, is that a diner thing? At my university, all the people in the dining hall clap when something is dropped and broken, and I'm confused with I, it. Well, it's a universal dining experience thing. Yeah. As long as you're not in, like, an angry restaurant. Yeah. As long as everyone feels relatively safe. It's not the crickets. Like, y'all are going to find out what this is and be like, wait, I didn't, why? Yeah, why? It's not the drums, and it's not the hazard alarm. Can you actually, can you play it on the Kinder Glockenspiel? Do you know the notes to it? 
I could figure it out. Should I give them? Well, a, should I give them a hint? Though? Well, actually, you know what? Let me play it. Can you pass me the Kinder Glock and Spiel? Uh. I mean, it's just two tones. Well, I yeah, I know. That's why I want to do it. Okay. Okay. Didn't do it. Well, that's... Okay. So. Is there not? Like, okay. I'm trying to think of what... I tried to find, like, the actual... Okay, so... <sighs> Googling this is not helpful. Try, try uh. C to A, maybe. Try C to A. Okay. C, a C down to A. What do you think? Yeah, that sounds like it, right? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the major third. Yeah, it sounds like you're doing it. E okay, sharp and C flat. Hold on, let's try that. E sharp. There's no E sh God! E sharp is F. <laughs> There's no do, C flat! Do, do, just do C sharp to A. Just do C sharp to C A. C sharp to A. There you go. Yeah. It was better, right? Yeah, yeah. I was doing a minor doorbell. Yeah, it's the doorbell. It's the doorbell. It's the doorbell. And it's exactly the doorbell. Their doorbell sounds it's the exactly... the same doorbell as their house. Their house has the exact same doorbell sound. And this alarm is going off every three minutes. And every three minutes, everybody's, like, walking over to the front door. Right. Because we keep hearing it. It's a it. Pavlovian thing. There's not, there's not enough, like... I don't know, no matter, no matter how much you tell your brain, oh, it's just her alarm. No. it's it, You're still hearing the doorbell. It hurts. It's painful. Yeah. <sighs> so I finally changed it for her. I forget what I... I think I did change it to pinball. Oh, nice. Lakshmi13 says, that's so funny because it's not my mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see? You see, that's what makes it funny. <laughs> because when you're living that, it's just like... <gasps> yeah, Transit Biker guessed it by the time I had already got the Kinder Glock and Spiel out. But before we actually played it. So I think I think Transit Biker wins on that. Um, oh, my well, gosh. Well, yeah, it is like a... It is a good hint. It's an, it's an approximate so yeah, being able timbre to, for that particular thing. Implying you could play it on the Kinder Glockenspiel with two notes was... Mm, uh, that's a big one. Yep. Yeah. That, that says a lot. Got a Kinder Glockenspiel. Gonna play two notes. A doorbell on an iPhone. Got a Kinder Glockenspiel. This is why we're going to let you actually do the uh, running up that hill for Rizzle. Oh, yeah, because it took me a minute to even recognize it. So yeah. So that's why yeah. we're going to let me do it. Yeah. Oh, boy. But, yeah. Yeah, that was, like, that's the sort of thing, like, that almost seems like a skit from Arrested Development or something. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, Mom, you know you can change the ringtone. I know, I changed it to that. But then you, then you have, like, Tobias actually mm -hmm. at the door trying to carry in something heavy and nobody's helping him because they all think it's the... the thing. <sighs> Morning, Queen Dark Lady, who writes, Good morning, siblings of the hills. Good morning. Morning, Beef and False as well. Good morning, Beef and False. We got so many people logging on to the server. Another hundred people just get off of the train. Soaking up things with a sponge That's all we've done But we're doing it well 
We're doing it well All by ourselves Ooh, magma It's hot It's hot, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot, hot That magma's hot, hot, hot How you feeling? <laughs> The first time I heard that song was on like a Toyota commercial or something. Yeah. Wasn't it Toyota that he Yeah, that yeah, Toyota had that Toyota's hot, hot, hot. Right, right, right. Is that, is, is that the, the uh, holiday that, uh, that art celebrates or, uh, or no, is it the other one? Yeah, no, whenever one of his, um, whenever one of his coworkers complains about somebody, uh, Wishing them happy holidays or wishing them the wrong holiday. Mm -hmm. He's always just like, oh, I was there the other day and that guy said happy Honda days to me, even though he knows we're a Toyota Thon family. <laughs> just, just like jumps in on the righteous indignation. Yeah. So secular. Yeah. Did you ever get around to watching Gigi the Christmas Snake? No, uh, because number one, I've never heard of it. And number okay. two, you never recommended it. To okay, me. but I would check it out. You, you... if it's something you enjoy. <laughs> it's 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 speaking of it's a nightmares. Great title. I have no idea what it's about. Speaking of nightmares, like uh, Gigi the Christmas Snake, Snake, it works on a lot of layers. Okay, mm -hmm. on its surface. It's a a skit about like kind of holiday trends, mm -hmm. but underneath, but it's actually like also a metaphor for like how kids get obsessed with like YouTubers or or whatever, and like the parents. Is that something that kids do? Yeah, and the parents like warp their lives around accommodating it. And I'm like, I'm watching it. I'm like, there are, are there people who warp their lives to accommodate Joe Hills? I tried to discourage that, but yeah. like, like there are straight up like, there's like YouTubers who are like, I've got a new candy bar and it's only available at Walmart. Bros, if your if your parents don't shop at Walmart, you need to drag them out there so you can get my candy bar. Cause each of my candy bars has a chance at a Wonka ticket where you can come visit me in my studio. That's that's just a beastly thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't believe people do that. Like, like, but like. It's like don't cult you're... of personality. Yeah, yeah, but like, mm -hmm. like I watch Gigi the Christmas Steak, and I'm like, this is this is like the worst case scenario for, uh, like like basically it's like okay this this character has replaced Santa. Uh, okay, I see. Type of thing. Um, is is that Mr. Beast's ultimate goal to I, replace Santa Claus? I don't actually know. <laughs> Mr. Beast is still, and I refuse to learn. Uh, I was, I was, somebody, I, I was gonna, uh, I sent Corinne to a, a, a birthday party, and they were like, uh, I was like, what do your kids want? Um, and they're like, uh, either Nintendo stuff or these Mr. Beast candy bars. And I was like, okay, I don't know who that is, but yeah. let me Google where I can find those. Only at Walmart. I'm like, well, we are out shopping now at a place that is not Walmart. There's no Walmart nearby, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to buy them some Nintendo gift cards so they can buy the new Zelda Nintendo or stuff or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, like, like they're the eShop gift card, so it's sure. like, it might not cover, I think I got them like 30 bucks each, which doesn't necessarily cover a full game for like the new Zelda, yeah, but it would but get like, them Animal Crossing or some indie games. But like... Sixty dollars or more for, you know, a child's friend's birthday party seems well. It was too. two. Much, it was you know? two kids. So thirty. Yeah, each. but thirty each. Yeah, that's like seems fine. Even that's. I don't know. Like yeah, I'm with inflation and stuff. Like it used to but be it's like, like yeah, Nintendo I, stuff. What's the cheapest Nintendo stuff you can get? Like an amiibo and how much do those? Well, cost? there was there was that heart, uh, the Zelda heart pillow that was thirty five dollars. Oh was right. Like, uh, well, and I guess there's there are Mario Legos you could probably get one. Yeah, those but like affordably ish. Yeah, but yeah, it's like, do the kids tough. already have those? Hey, we got another five rolling in. Let's see who that's from. Another five. Assuming I can click on this. Uh, Mini Cheese Mouse tips five and writes, Howdy, Joe and Quinn. 
missed a few streams recently as my headphones broke, but new ones just arrived. Your headphones broke, but now you're back, back. Hey, cheese mouse. Thank you, Muchly. So, welcome, everyone. If you are not aware, we are splitting the tips 50-50. So half of that's going to Quinn for making the trip across town here. Tips are welcome via paypal.me slash joehills and YouTube Super Chat. I really enjoy having Quinn show up for these streams. So I want to encourage this, all the tips. What is this Badger speaks of? They're saying young kids freaking out about soda bottles and beating people up for them. I actually, Do you know anything about I, that? I, what is that? I don't know about that. And the thing is, sometimes when I don't know are about... They, are they Mr. Beast Colas? That's... Yeah, I don't know. So sometimes when a sentence makes that little sense to me, I wait to see if there's a follow-up sentence. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay, maybe one of those words in there was, like, the wrong word, and there's going to be a follow-up that, like... Yeah, I understand all of these words okay, on their own, I don't but know. not together. What, what is that? Oh, Logan Paul. And kindless self-indulgence? What's KSI? KSI Miami. Oh. I watched that. <laughs> Kitten scene yeah. investigators. Meow. Yeah. Yeah. Kitten I'd scene watch that. That's fest. actually a good idea. That's that's going on. <laughs> that's, our, that's going on that's our, going our on the two list. billion dollar streaming service. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I don't I just know of Logan Paul as a guy who once wore a holographic Charizard card into a boxing ring around his neck. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But I think maybe that was the only cool thing he's ever done. Was he was he refing the boxing match? No, he was fighting in the boxing match. Oh. Yeah, I, I think that there's we... This, I there's really want to do more of, live like, influencers. Events. Would you box? Uh, okay, so here's the thing. Is This reminds me of when Carrot Top would No, I, I, I really think that, like, I want to do more live events with my friends on Hermitcraft. If Vintage Beef was like, hey, Joe, do you want to come do this boxing thing with me in Canada? I'd be like, I don't really know how to box, but you know what? I'll take a few punches to get an excuse to hang out with my friends. Like, yeah. that... That's worth it to me. I'd probably want to wear, like... We could film a training montage leading up to it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what, like, safety equipment would be involved. But, like, you know, in, um... Like, uh, whatever he was wearing in, um... Or in, uh... Better Call Saul. Like, you know, the helmet, the mouth guard, or whatever. Like, I don't think that I could fight a real boxer, but, yeah. like... Wait, there are multiple Logan Pauls? I, I mean, th them? that's... Well, yeah, Logan and Paul. Oh, yeah. So... But I mean, it's like robbing Logan to pay Paul. Yeah. But it really, like, I, I would, I would totally do like a boxing thing. I, you know, and that's the thing is, if you were like, well, Joe, what about archery? You're terrible at archery. Would you do an archery thing with your friends? Yes, because it's with my friends. <laughs> like, boxing's been good to me, Joseph. But like, I mean, you know, I've done like uh, some. Like, in college, I did some martial arts stuff. You know, nothing I stuck with or whatever in the, like, afterwards. But, like, you know, I... You don't join the Marine Corps if you're afraid of getting hit occasionally. <laughs> like... True. <laughs> I just don't have that type of self-preservation that would make me say I don't want to yeah. get punched by vintage beef. <laughs> Be sure to like and subscribe for your chance to see Joe Hills get hit. <laughs> At the three hundred and sixty dollar level, I will deck my brother. Yeah, that, that's actually the thing I don't have is I don't have the training uh, to take a hit. Well, no, I don't have the. I don't know how to like safely punch somebody in like box with boxing form or whatever. I don't, oh sure. Like I because I wouldn't want to hurt. I would be more worried about hurting somebody by yeah, you accident. Don't want to break a rib or something. Because like oh that's a you know. Cho Hills' biggest hit yet. I, I need a holographic Cho Hills card. I could go boxing with. Evan Netta, thank you very much for the tip, who writes, Hey, Quinn and Joe, it's Shavuot Eve right now, which is a holiday that celebrates crops and the earth and the giving of the Torah to the Jews. 
Oh, awesome. What is, what is the traditional greeting for Thank that? You. If I wanted to wish you a happy Shavuot, um, what, what, what would you say? Uh, thank you very much, though. That comes out to four U.S. Abacus speeds, so we're going to rotate the camera to 19. 19 degrees, 19. That just means we're uh, 161 away from yeah. our first goal of me playing Kate Bush's Running Up That Hill. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. That, that's why I said yeah so excitedly. No, I'm sorry. No, I was so, I, so, ex I was so yeah. excitedly. Yeah, no, Beef Frawley is really strong because he is a real-life farmer. But, um, I mean, realistically, though, I, I, I love the idea of doing more IRL stunts with my friends. Uh, well, and kind of like uh, in Rocky 1 where, where he goes to, uh, like, a, a butcher shop and, and, and hits the beef to oh, yeah. prepare. That would be perfect training for you to fight beef. Yeah, yeah. Do we actually know anybody who, like, works at Porter Road Butcher or anything that we can just... I don't know. Isn't your, uh... Didn't your attorney box for a time? I believe he so. He could probably teach you. Yeah. Hey, welcome, Saucefire from Canadaville, Canada. I hope you had a fantastic birthday the other day. Some of y'all might remember we raided Saucefire. And I hey. appreciated y'all sticking around to wish him a happy birthday. Canadaville, Canada. Mm-hmm. I'm from Americaville, America. You don't say. Yep. Just kidding, I'm from Nashville. Running up that hill. <laughs> Canadian. Something, something, something. Maple leaves. Maple syrup. I, I will say most of what I know about Canada is from what I saw on television. Specifically the two television shows, Slings and Arrows, which is yeah. about a Shakespearean mm -hmm. theater. Right. Um, and oh, what's the other the one? The Red Green Show. Oh, actually, three shows three then. Shows. Yeah, the Red Green Show. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Little Mosque on the Prairie, mm -hmm. which takes place in like uh, Saskatchewan. They're like, they're like an hour away, or they're they're like I think they're supposed to be like two or three hours away from Regina, oh, which okay. is like not even a huge city. You never like, watched Trailer Park Boys, huh? No. No. Just never got to it, I guess. Yeah. Fire Chief says, I'm in Saskatchewan right now. Sauce Fire says, did Corner Gas make it out your way? No, it didn't. Corner Gas. Don't know about that. Um. Oh, I'm watching a sh I've been watching a show called Sort Of uh, uh -huh. that takes place in Toronto. It's really, really cool. Hmm. Oh, I guess Scott Pilgrim takes place in Canada. It does. Badger says, my friends do a comedian's wrestling event. That's cool. That's another thing. I don't have any wrestling training. Like, I, anything like that, I would really want to get some actual formal instruction just to make sure nobody gets hurt. Mm-hmm. Because, like... Yeah. You're not worried about yourself getting hurt. You're worried about hurting other people accidentally. Yeah. yeah. Well, because, like, if I get hurt, like, that's an inconvenience for... Like, I guess it's kind of one of those things where, like, if I screw up because I didn't get the right training, it feels fair that I got punished. Mm. But if I didn't get the right training and somebody else gets hurt... That it, doesn't seem fair to them. That that feels like... that, that You screwed up. Yeah. I, I, yeah, if I screwed up and I get hurt, okay, I learned my lesson. I screw up and somebody else gets hurt, that's just... I screwed up. Yeah. You know, fool me once, shame yeah. on you. Hey, Fandom Anon, tip in an even hundred. Fandom Anon, Ro thank you so much. Rotating one hundred degrees. Woo! That gets us real close to our running up that hill goal. This is going to bring us up to 119 degrees. Whoa. Why is the camera rotating on the... It's We're unhinged. Let me... The camera's supposed to rotate around the center point, and sometimes it doesn't. When are we not unhinged? I know. Okay, we're going. We're, we're up to 65 degrees. We're 80 degrees. We're siblings, and we're quite unhinged. Rotating. Rotating. We're at 119 like now. Like a tater tot. Or a rotator cup. 
Uh, Badger Spanner says that her comedian friends who did the wrestling things had instruction, and they two of them still broke bones. Oh, no. Yeah. So you would need to get m even more in instructions. Joe will recognize a few names in this last lineup. Uh, Alex Horn, yeah. Uh, yeah. I recognize that one. Two of those are people oh, Alex, from Ed Gamble. Alex Horn I saw was Ed the Gamble host, right? Of uh, Taskmaster, yeah. Of the uh, comedy show you went to, right? Yep. And then uh, that B person with the first name that I will mispronounce. Uh, I know that because I mispronounced it several times, and I, I oh just my. need to hear it more often. Sure. I wouldn't know how. B person. Yeah. Running up that hill. Is it Eastling? I don't know. It's not a very common name over I, here. I Ashling. It's pronounced like Ashley, but smaller, like an Ashley. That just says Ashling, yeah. But like, I, I can't say it right without like intense focus. Yeah. It's, uh, it's Irish, isn't it? Is it? Okay. I don't know. That was my guess. Okay, so looks like we got another tip rolling in. We have a thing where sometimes the tips show up on the phone, but not on the computer. It's like one out of 20, so, so occasionally I have to go I check. I think it's that. on the computer now. Oh, it did come in eventually. Okay, great. By the time it, I got my phone unlocked, which is a multi-step process. Uh, Badger says, yep, Irish. Ooh. Paul says, I put an item on Joe and Quinn and want to use rotate hills to attack the opposing hermit. So here we go. We're going to... Rotate 11. That's going to bring us up to 1. Thank you. 30. And we're attacking the opposing hermit. For 11. Let's say for 110. For 110. Okay. But we're also nonviolent, and so it feels kind of strange. But yeah. Like, it would be fun to do, like, uh, IRL Hermitcraft Taskmaster type thing. That would be fun. Um, okay, so this area hasn't been segmented off yet, so we're going to have issues mm -hmm. there. Uh, we'll come back to that. Weren't y'all talking about meeting up to, uh, like, autograph cards? Yeah, that, that's still something we're in process on. Mm, uh, I see. Like, Could be a good time to wrestle. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think we necessarily will plan something that physical. Sure. But I was I was giving an example of like like people are when people are like oh yeah this guy's a jerk he he boxed somebody I'm like I don't think that like boxing somebody Inherently else on, is intrinsically yeah, yeah 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 like I I I would be I think he's a jerk uh, regardless. independently exactly yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Queen Dark Lady suggests IRL Hermitcraft pillow fights. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Yeah. They, they all have to be $35 Zelda heart-shaped pillows. Yeah. It's a statement of two facts. Two facts. Two things can be true at the same time. Am I getting chroma keyed out? I didn't even think of that when I put on green today. Oh, I thought you green. did that on purpose. Do, no, you, do you want to see how it looks? Yeah, how does it look? Yeah, it's getting chroma I'm getting keyed, keyed out. Getting keyed out. Yeah. No, I Keyed out. Yeah, when, when I saw you unloading, I was like, oh, that's great. I did not even think about it. I just I bought this top yesterday and was like, I like this. Now I've been keyed out. I'm disappearing before your eyes. Chroma green, chroma green, chroma green. Okay, oh, this is all connected. Do, 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 do. 
now the American Anthem. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh... Yeah, we usually do a, uh, a Discord, uh, viewing of the dish every a year. A Discord. A Discord viewing every year. Usually do it around your birthday, around my July birthday. 20th. Yeah. Um, so if you want to join us for that, uh, mm. I can't pay you, <laughs> but you're welcome to come. <laughs> uh, I, on, I only hang out with you when I'm getting paid. Yeah, I know. So... I know. It's like... Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Hashtag not a paid gig. Hmm. <laughs> no, I like this community. I'll hang out. Okay. Uh, when's I could, my... even, I could even be here in the room. That's what I was actually going to suggest was like, did you want to come over and we could do, you know, snacks and drinks or whatever? Yeah, I like snacks and drinks and whatever. Cool. Joe pay Joe has to pay his siblings to tolerate them. Uh, okay, you know what? I I am pretty insufferable, so like I get it. Takes a lot to uh, get this water under control, eh? Oh yeah, a lot. Whoops, that was a bad. I meant to put a torch there, but yeah, water in Minecraft is a whole thing. It's actually better than it used to be. It used to be that one source block would just fill everything up infinitely. Oh god! Until it was like level. Is there an amount of, like, blocking off or, like, filling in a pit that stops water from coming, or it's inevitable? So, the way it works now is that if there's source blocks next to each other, they'll create more source blocks at, like, a diagonal. Mm -hmm. Which is why, like, in a narrow passage here, I can kind of clean this up easier than in, like, a uh, large space. Because in a large space, it'll just refill. Like, mm. this is too big. I would need to segment it off with gravel. Where, where's the water coming from? Is it because the pinball machine is in water? Yeah, it's, it's, below from below? it's below sea level. Oh, I see. So that's the issue. Yeah. So, like, in order to make If the... you had built it well above sea level, you wouldn't have this issue. But, but I you also wouldn't have the block height. Yeah, because it, it's... Because you hit the, what is it, 321? 319 build 319. height. Yeah, yeah. So in order to do this, it had to come out of the sea kaiju style. Which is the same way I rise every morning. Rise up. Oh, Just I... Just like a kaiju, I'll rise up. <laughs> like Godzilla or a Mothra, I'll rise up. Yeah, tell Mothra that she's got to rise up. Rise up, rise <laughs> I will say, I am actually, um, did you see PlayStation, ha Sony had a bunch of announcements the other, uh, yesterday? They had uh, I, I saw, like, people commenting on something, but I didn't investigate what they were. Uh, okay. They were just kind of like, this is a bad idea. Well, okay, we've been talking off camera, like, at our lunches, about how, like, I was just like, you know, if I'm going to invest in a, in a, uh, Mac as my recording and streaming PC, I might need to finally buy a console besides the Nintendo, like either an Xbox or Sony. Mm -hmm. And how Sony just hadn't really done a good job of, like, selling me in particular the PlayStation, which is fine. Maybe I'm not their target audience. Sure. But... In the same way that, uh, that Microsoft hasn't sold us on an Xbox either. No, no. Especially when we have PCs and almost all of their games are on PCs. They don't really have exclusives anymore, do they? No, but this PlayStation announcement actually featured a timed exclusive that I am excited about. Like, mm, do tell. 
So I, I was thinking about this. I'm like, I, why am I more excited about this than like any other game that's been announced in years? Like the new Zelda game, I, I had a lot of fun playing it. I'm gonna sure. mostly be, I've actually put off playing more of it until Corinne goes away for the summer. Cause that's kind of my like, uh, you know, keeping myself company while she's gone game. Right, you know? and it's not I like... I it now. Yeah, it's not that there aren't games I would like to play on the PS5, but usually it's like, well, that's just one game. Like, God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. I'm not buying a console just for one game. Yeah. So, but, like, with the new Zelda or whatever, or the new... If they announced, like, more Mario Kart levels, like, which they did, I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm excited about that, but, like, right. I wasn't this excited. And I realized it's because... Those uh, franchises, basically, there's always going to be another one, right? Like, Nintendo is always going to make another Zelda game. Mm -hmm. uh, at least, like, for within our lifetimes, you know? I'm not saying, like, the year is 8,000. Zelda, the walk winder is out, right? Like, I'd play it, yeah. But, um, whereas this game is made by the folks who made Night in the Woods, which is, like, a small independent studio... Mm -hmm. And there's no guarantee with a small independent studio they're going to make a second game. Right. Um, and this is made by uh, at Bombs Fall yes, on Twitter. Right? Scott Benson, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Bethany Hockenberry mm -hmm. uh, is his creative partner and romantic partner. They have a house and cats and stuff. Um, but yeah, I am very, very So excited. they have a game that's a PS5 exclusive? Well, no. That would actually really make me disappointed because I, I can't afford a PS5. They have... It's a PlayStation exclusive. It's also coming out for the PlayStation 4, and I know a bunch of people with PlayStation 4s who want to buy PlayStation 5s, who I could be oh, like... So you're going to pick up a PlayStation 4 from someone who wants to buy a PlayStation 5? Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, I don't think the PlayStation 5 has, like, a Blu-ray, and I need... So when... It does. Oh, it does? Okay. There's a disc version and a non-disc version. Does it play DVDs as well? Yes. Because I know some of the newer consoles, there was a thing where like they only play Blu-rays, they don't play traditional DVDs or something? No, it should. Okay. It should. But Because uh, Badgers uh, bring in a whole DVD Blu-ray collection, so I need to get a mm. Blu-ray DVD player anyway. Correct. And my original plan was to get a PlayStation 3 for that from like McKay's, but now I'm like, oh, maybe um, it looks like Art might be well... selling his PlayStation 4. What? Because wasn't the uh, PS3 uh, choice made due to its lack of region locking? Wait, are you saying the PlayStation 4 is region locked? I don't know, but I'm saying it's something should you should think it. about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Badger Before says, you make that purchase. Badger says I have zero Blu-rays. Okay, but still, we need a DVD player. Sure. Okay. Yeah, PS4 plays DVDs. I've played a DVD on a PS4. And, uh, yeah. So, core concept, though. Core concept, and then you have the potential to get Blu-rays. Which, well, I, the way streaming services are removing their media every day... We're gonna want that, yeah. That's like, this is the way. Phys well, physical media. Also, for my various birthdays over the years, Art keeps buying me Blu-rays. So I have... Even a, though you have no Blu-ray player. Well, and now he's gonna sell me one to buy a PlayStation 5, so... So this has been his plan <laughs> all along. It's been a very slow burn. This has been his plan. It's been a very slow burn, but it's... <laughs> what movies do you have? Did you hold oh, on they're, to them? They're... Oh, I, they're, I don't even... They're in a box somewhere, okay. because I don't have a Blu-ray Because you don't watch player. them, yeah. You can't. But, like, no, they're they're all, like, bad movies. They're, they're not... It's not like he's, like, going out and getting me, like, Oh, Joe, I know you love this movie. Here it is on Blu-ray. It's like... Oh, here's um, here here's some terrible Shakespearean movie that's like the act. This actor's like biggest embarrassment of their career. Wow. Or something like I or like Joe, you made a joke about this play the other day, so I got you the Blu-ray version of it, and I'm like, thanks. Hey, Smugless, thank you for tipping twenty. Uh, so. We're going to go ahead and we're going to rotate the camera another 20 degrees. That gets us up to 150. 150, we are 30 away from our first goal. Clam Pixie says PS4 and PS3 are both region free. Awesome. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Our Petu work is done. Yeah. Petulant um, Petricor agrees. Um, so, okay. Uh, so the new game is called Revenant Hill, and uh, apparently you play a cat who used to live in a church, but then the church is burned down. So now you live in a log, 
and you're you're a cat who lives in a log. I think this might be a metaphor for something, um, because I, I think Scott Benson was raised religious. But mm. anyway, um, and it's kind of part interacting with the nearby village where um, there's some sort of like factory strike or labor dispute going on. Mm-hmm. Part like uh, harvest moon type farming thing because like uh, oh that's kind of like uh the haunted chocolatier is about a chocolate factory yeah factory is very very hot fa- right factories now. are so hot right now uh because this time of year uh it's very expensive to cool them well and also we're i, I see the world thinking about labor more and more and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm seeing more about unions than i ever have before mm-hmm well, and that's always been a big thing for Benson. So his company is actually like a worker-owned co-op. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and he, he tweeted about – this is why I follow him on Twitter because the process of okay. setting up is, a – Is he someone you've met or know personally? Uh, I've met him once at PAX, but like we don't – you know, it was just like, sure. hey, I like your game. You know, he you know he's watching somebody play the demo type of thing. Oh, Okay. Yeah, well, because it was like there, there were like his booth had like fifteen people in it. Oh, cool! And I was just like, "Hey, you're bomb small on Twitter, right?" He's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Awesome! I love your game. I like your stuff you're working on." He's like, "Cool, you know." Um, Seems like that went pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's it's the sort of thing like I'm not gonna demand his attention. Like, so yeah, I have met him, but like I don't know him. Um, but yeah, I've been following him on Twitter for a long time. Uh, oh, uh, Alexis87 just offered to send you a free PS4. Uh, would someone be able to tip you a PS4? I'd feel more comfortable. Well, I've also, well, so I've already uh, been talking to my friend about it. But mm-hmm. also, mm-hmm. in terms of any sort of hardware I'm connecting to a network, I'd rather not accept it for free. That's not a, a value judgment on you, Alexis. That's just like a general policy. Uh, I have for from a network security standpoint, that's uh, fair. like because I worked in tech, you know, like that's just the sort of thing that I'm paranoid about. But I, I appreciate the offer. That's very, very kind of you. You should but, get a PO box uh, for 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 us to have like a weekly mailbag. Uh, we read letters. Well, the reason I haven't done that is because I keep thinking I'm about to move. Yeah, that's fair. And you have to live within the zone of that post office to keep the P.O. box or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But I, I do appreciate the offer, Alexis. Uh, I, But I've already got something I've lined up. And, like, I'm not... My friend is going to give me a good deal on this, so it's not like it's... Uh, not going to break the bank. No. And y- y'all are going to get a lot of use out of it. Yeah. The DVDs and the blues and the rays. Yeah. Well, and also, like, I want to be able to, uh, like, once I get the Mac Pro and I'm not running a Windows PC for streaming, there's going to be games that are going to be, like, PlayStation and PC games, and then this mm-hmm. way I can play those. Um, and it looks like, because the PlayStation 5 was underproduced, for the next two years or so, they're just going to be releasing everything on both the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5. Yeah. So there's just no rush. Just be wary of, like, new triple a games they don't perform very well on the ps4 well i mean i don't i don't really it. like triple a games anyway yeah like what about um, double a or single a uh that, that's about the correct number of a's um delg says what company is this oh um i think they're calling themselves the glory collective mm-hmm. um or the glory company i'd have to glory, look it up glory, glory, hallelujah. Because this is the first game they're publishing since they've established the company. Like, Night in the Woods wasn't um, published under that label. Oh, I see. Because they had a hard time. Apparently, in in certain states, it's really hard to set up a worker-owned co-op. Like, they don't want you to do it. Mm Mm-hmm. They're like, no, the wealthy people should own the companies. Don't, Don't let your... Like, basically, if your workers ask for this, you can tell them it's not legal. Is what... Yeah. So... Oh, the name of the game is uh, Revenant Hill. Mm-hmm. I keep wanting to say Relevant Hill. Uh, running but... up that Revenant Hill. Yep, we are 30 away from running up that hill. No, I appreciate the offer, Alexis. I appreciate it. 
but you know, just from from a, a respecting everybody who supports me financially standpoint, um, you know, I want to protect the privacy of everybody who supports me on Patreon and, and things like that, and you know, making sure we don't just connect random things to the network is one way I do that. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay, so we got the blue box here for the gravel, which is currently full of other stuff, mm. anyway. What have you been uh, crafting on your uh, crafting with Cleo streams lately? I have been sketching a bunch of models uh, or playfields of uh, pinball machines that I'm going to be playing in June in Wisconsin. Mm. Because a lot of these older, like it's a classics tournament, so... Basically, most of the games are from, like, the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And some of the older games have some really weird gimmicks to them. Mm-hmm. And they're not necessarily easy to find here in Tennessee either. So I can't right practice, on. practice on. But you can familiarize yourself with the layout. Yeah, by, by learning the layout. The last thing I want to do is get to a machine and, like, not realize, like, oh, there's another flipper there. Or there's some sort of gimmick that I didn't know existed right um because a lot of people are gonna not have necessarily played these individual machines um but i i need to if i'm going all the way up to wisconsin you know i need to actually be prepared as much as possible this is going to be my first like big tournament where like some of the best players in the world are there and i know i'm not going to beat them that's fine but what i'm curious is like as one of like the middling players here in tennessee there's also going to be some middling players mm. from Wisconsin there who are just like, oh, this is my local place, you know. I would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for you middling, middling. kids. Oh, Glory Society is the name of the company. Thank you, Awkward Glory World. Society. Uh, Caster Boris says, what kind of gimmick? Um, like, each game might have different stuff, but like... Yeah, you gotta have a gimmick. But, like, um, you know, for example, some games might have magnets in weird places How or might have work? extra flippers or mm -hmm. uh, might have a weird way to capture the ball or an interesting plunge skill shot mechanism. Yeah. I do really like the uh, the analog sounds of the older tables. Yeah, the bells and chimes are great. Bells and whistles and chimes. I don't think I've ever played one with a whistle. That if you were making a train game, putting an actual like whistle in there would be <laughs> that'd be great. That but but like that's the great thing about pinball is because unlike a console where you have standardized hardware and you basically have to make what you're doing work with their controllers unless you're making something like Rock Band, which is yeah. but that's limiting though to to have the special controller. You know, with a, with a console, you can only do what the console has. Yeah. But, like, on a pinball machine, you can just straight up say, we're going to put a, a compressor and a whistle in here. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's a $12,000 machine. We can put a whistle in here. Yeah, I think if if we had the resources, I would design a pinball machine with you. You know, I could handle a lot of the sound design and and that stuff. And yeah. You can focus on the layout. We can, we can talk about missions and story together as well mm -hmm. well and for right now like for the deep field one of the big things is that there's actually uh you know space is a vacuum <laughs> so like what noise do space telescopes make mm. hopefully none because <laughs> that means they've entered Absolutely the atmosphere none. yeah <laughs> it's bad when they're making noises um but yeah I i'm hoping to do other designs in the future this is kind of like the my first real stab at it sure but, uh, yeah, that'd be fun. I was talking about real pinball. Well, I mean, that's actually in the long term something I want to do, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, workshop-wise. Like, but like I said, that might be after Karin goes to college. <laughs> Did I get hit by an arrow? Did you? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Korean logged out at some point. Korean's here. D didn't even see that. That's fine. Womp womp. How come Joe always greets everyone else but not me? All right, let's fly over to Green and be like, hello. No. <laughs> He's probably busy with Lord. I don't want to mess with him. Uh, but you could always ask. Nah. I'm like, 
actually, so like I'm kind of borrowing these sponges while Jevin is away. Oh, so, I see. There's, this is one of those. You only want to irritate one person at a time. Yeah, like I, I, I don't really want to spread. Yeah, I, 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 I need to focus. Uh, focus fire. Why? Focus fire on sponging. Um, Salem is tipping ten and says. Good morning. My sister's heading down to visit. Any recommendations for less obvious neat places around Nashville? Well, let's go ahead and rotate the camera 10 first. Less obvious neat places. Um, I was going to say um, it depends on like what kinds of stuff your sister you likes. talking about food? Or are you talking about old? like outings, activities, yeah, or everything? Like how much, how long will this uh, sister, sister be here? Because that also like, you know. Yeah. We could plot out an entire week of events if we needed to, but you yeah. know, if it's just a day, you gotta you gotta pick maybe like a neighborhood or two and stick to that. I've been thinking I need to do a blog post of my like, so you're coming to Nashville recommendations, but the problem is a lot of that knowledge is out of date because it's like pre-pandemic stuff, right? Yeah, and like I don't have I haven't had the time to go back through and revisit a lot of places. Well, I want to. and a lot of like your familiar haunts would disclose your location not necessarily i'm getting around town a lot you get more. a little bit around well and a lot of my familiar haunts were like this is near a place i used to work true where i don't work anymore so that's like true. that's not the end of the world there it's the end of the world as we know it life feels fine um but like also like some of the touristy stuff I might recommend it's like well I, it's not like I'm there constantly like you know the Frist Museum check out what they've got going on when they've got cool stuff going on it's worth going when they're between exhibits it's not like you know cuz you know they'll have like a month where they're like we're swapping exhibits and they don't have a t it's not a big enough museum to like have stuff have as much stuff going on when they're swapping things right mhm mm um She's here all weekend. We can both drive. She's a drinking age. A few parks for hiking, Cheekwood, and a few good spots. Yeah, Radnor Lake and Percy Warner are both great uh, for hiking. Um, Cheekwood is fantastic. It's beautiful there. I frequently have a membership. I don't. Well, I say frequently. I would say out of the last 12 years, I've probably had a membership for seven. I'll, I'll, I'll get a membership for a year and go there all the time, and then I'll be like, ah... Uh, this is really expensive. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll skip a year and then I'll go back. And then I'll, I'll be like, why don't we go to Cheekwood anymore? And then I'm like, oh yeah, the day rate is so expensive. You might as well get the annual membership. And then I'll right. go there nonstop for a year. And then, uh, yeah. So like, they do have like fun events during the summer though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Something, yeah. something to consider, I suppose. I actually got engaged at Cheekwood. That's uh, right. You got engaged. At Cause they, they had their Charles Adams exhibit, uh, which obviously Badger being a huge Charles Adams fan, that was a good way to do that. Um, I think so. Sounds like a successful proposal. Uh huh. And we actually have uh, filed our um, our thing with the government Ooh, now. Ooh, congrats! Thank you. So now we wait for fourteen months, <laughs> but like, <laughs> really, that's like the average waiting period. Yeah. Fourteen months. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm. But, like, at least the part where, like, I mean... and That's then, very different from what you expected, like, six months ago. Well, no, six months ago I was expecting 14 months because I didn't think it would take us six months to file it. Yeah, but there was, like, a time where you're talking about, like, oh, if Badger's here by the summer, which does not imply that you were thinking about 14 months. Well, no, because the average is 14 months. It could be anywhere between, like, 3 and 18. Oh, okay, see. That's, or, like, 6. That's different. That yeah. makes things different. That Yeah. But, like, realistically, it's... Uh, the, the lower bound on that has crept up quite a bit. Sure. Also, it's... Bureaucracy. Like, 3 would be v extremely unlikely, but... But extremely cool. Yeah. But, you know. Oh, y'all didn't find out the proper average waiting time till January. Well, it's also changed too. Yeah. Yeah. It was originally four to. Uh, okay. Yeah. You know, I just uh, get excited. And, uh, I was excited. You know, I want Badger here. Badger. Now. You know, so it's, yeah. it's tough. 
I can get it. No. But uh, yeah, Cheekwood's a great one. Um, cheeky. Yep, yep, yep. How far are we away from our next goal? But yeah, if you can drink, uh, I really strongly recommend No Quarter in East Nashville. Yeah, or if your sister can drink. Yeah. Um, but th that's like my favorite pinball bar in town. You don't even have to drink to enjoy No Quarter. No, you can just play pinball. Yeah. But like, you know, if you don't like bars, it is definitely, sure. it's a pinball bar. Yes. So I, I don't want you to have un, uh, reasonable expectations. If you want a, a, a straight-up arcade, go to Game Galaxy down in Smyrna. Yes. Now, Smyrna is not in Nashville. It's out no. of town. No. It's like a 25, 30-minute drive. But, so you would need a car if you're visiting. Well, they said they had a car. Oh, okay. So, I didn't see that part. I no, 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 I did. I my sister is headed down to visit. Any recommendations for less obvious neat places? That's all I saw. Yeah, yeah. Badger says, if you don't like bars, go to Game Galaxy Jinx. Yeah. Yeah, we're on the same page there. Okay. Salem, if you go on a Wednesday night, go to no quarter. <laughs> yeah, that's the tournament night. Might even have a Quinn sighting. Yeah. What a coincidence. A qu what a coincidence. <laughs> that, 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 okay, for some reason... Coincidentally. That, that got me thinking of, uh, you could do Quinnima Rinky Dinky Dink, Quinnima Rinky do. I love... Now well, it's getting parasocial. I know. What was the name of that show with the the elephant people? Uh, Babar. Oh no no no! The one that the Skinamarinky Dinky Dink song comes from. Elephant people. Yeah, it's like three people and an lamb elephant. Lamb chop. No, it's it, it was like the same era as lamb chop. Uh, uh, well, I, yeah, I mean, I know the song, and I yeah, it escapes me what the elephants' song show is i don't know yeah definitely definitely go see uh dollywood if you can it might be called the elephant show that might actually be it badger asks has quinn ever had quince i've had quiche i and i know of uh i've never heard i of know this. of is this a food? i know of peter quince uh from a midsummer's night's dream uh but what is is quince a food i'm assuming it's a food u't uh, sounds like something they'd have over in London doesn't it it might be quince it might be quince might be have I had a quince I wasn't given a quince um because apparently it's, it's a culture. flower says titian cat it's a plum oh badger says uh, quince is a plum we make paste from in the UK Go super well cheese. Oh, that's cool. I do like plums and I do like cheese, so I probably would like. Yeah, plums. we should we should put that on the charcuterie board. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Charcuterie board. 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 Just. Awkward one says I've never been to an arcade before. I don't think those exist here in Belgium. Uh, oh. I I don't know anything about Belgium. That's sad. so that makes me sad for Belgium. Yeah, Hopefully they had to have existed at some time in Belgium, right? Maybe had like unless they were somehow outlawed for like uh, all these machines are gambling. I don't know Belgian laws, so yeah. I don't know. So, but the eighties had to be arcades almost everywhere, right? One thing that's interesting to me is so Corinne's going to her first ever away camp, like overnight camp for mm -hmm. a week this summer. And uh the camp people um don't want the uh the kids to have to bring cell phones, right? That that makes right, sense. Which she already doesn't have she already doesn't have one. But the thing is like there's like a from a custody standpoint, there's like we're supposed to have phone calls with her mom or whatever. Um and so I was like, okay, well she can just use a payphone 
because since it's a camp where no kids are allowed to have cell phones, they'll still have... Surely that's the one place on the planet they haven't ripped out all the payphones. Surely. They ripped out all the payphones! <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. Why? Why, in the only place in the world that you would still need payphones, mm. did you rip out all the payphones? <laughs> They're just... Uh, so... Yeah, I just had to basically say, hey, for your two calls that week, how does one on Sunday before we drop her off and one on Friday after we pick her up sound? Yeah. Which is fine, luckily. But I'm like... guessing... I'm guessing the reasoning is that it, it costs more to upkeep those payphones than they actually were making. Like the phone company just doesn't want to do it. Right, that's what I would guess. If they were still profitable, there's no way they would have taken them down, right? Yeah, but like I guess I guess the over the cost of keeping a particular payphone running has gone up. And, and as I'm also fewer curious payphones overall. Yeah, like if you're if you're at a gas station and uh you're a phone company and you have a payphone is is the phone company paying to like rent that space like in the parking lot for their telephone booth or like on the wall or were you paying Do to you know, have the payphone there exactly. and you get a cut of the I'm not I'm not sure how that would work. Yeah, I don't know either. Cuz both parties would benefit in some way, I imagine, but Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. And any uh telephonic historians in the chat? But, like, I remember when I was at camp, they, there were always pay phones to, to mm -hmm. call home. Like, Same. Not this that was I, e even in, like, the early 2000s, yeah. Yeah, well, when we were in high school, there was a pay phone at the track at the high school, so when I was get when I would get done with cross-country practice, I could call mom. Mm -hmm. and be like, hey, come pick me up. Come pick Except me up. Except it was more like, up. you're receiving a collect call from, it's your son Joe, come pick me up. <laughs> Do you accept the charges? No. no. <laughs> I've landed. There was a great commercial uh, where, where this guy uh, is, is, is at the payphone at the hospital calling his family. Yeah. And he, uh, you've received a collect call from, Bob, we had a baby, it's a boy. <laughs> Do you accept the charges? And then, like, the first one would be like, no. And then he calls the next. He's, like, just going through his phone book, calling everybody in the family. And it's just like, is this how you're telling your family about uh, your new kid? Maybe you should get a phone card, you know? Mm, maybe I should. But, like, we had a baby, it's a boy. <laughs> it's just like, that's, like, efficient. It doesn't cost anything. Yeah, yeah. What's the problem? It, you know, it's, you're not, like buying postcards and sending those out yeah. you know you're, you're saving the environment so do it it was a product of its time says geek of many topics yeah yeah mm, that it was as am i But yeah, I uh, I was just shocked that they're like, how do kids call home? They don't. <laughs> it's like, okay. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. Like, I mean, I you know, I want her to be independent anyway. And like, yeah, I, you I know. She's at a good age and, now and, where and, she can be. Yeah, and neither of us are like so clingy where it's like she's going to be incapable of functioning without talking to us for a week, you know. True. Um... So it's it's fine, but yeah, I was just I was just surprised that it wasn't even an option. Yeah, because like e even if I you know, like if the court wants her to have two calls with her mom a week, I need to try to accommodate that. You know? Yes, for sure. So. Um, Badger says, there are arcades in Belgium. There's, I've been to one in Brussels and one in Ghent. They're just not arcade bars. Gotcha. Thank you, Badger. Thank you, Badger, for your font of knowledge. If you Google pinball map person from Belgium, there, there might be, uh, you know what? I could, I could Google pinball map 
and then pull up Belgium on it. Yeah, Joe, do the work. Yeah, explore the map. Exploring near the map. Belgium. Belgium. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's Le Omnisports, uh, 12 Rue de Chateau oh, de Ou, cool. Charleroi, Walloni. That's got a Deadpool. There's the Cafe de la Hotel de Ville and uh, Florius Walloni. Le, 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 They've got a Batman the 66. Cafe de la Hotel de Ville. Such a uh, lovely place. Such a lovely place. Such yeah, the, lovely these don't look place. like real arcades, though. These are just like bars that happen to have one the Guardians bar or one. bar karaoke that has a Deadpool. Is yeah. Deadpool very uh, popular in Belgium? I really like the... the uh... okay. So that's just putting me where the label for the word Belgium is. Oh, oh. yeah, there's... If I zoom out, yeah... yeah. Okay. Oh, Active Game Dojo. Active has Game quite Dojo a few tables. has a lot of tables in Tongeren, Lambs West, Barcadia in Seclin Hots de France, Black Ooh. Pub in Hilden NRW. Yes. Yeah, there, there's, there's a lot. Of, whoa. Brussels Pinball Museum in Brussels. That'd be a good place to go to. I'm really not pronouncing these well, <laughs> but you get the idea. Core concept. There's definitely places in Belgium. Yeah. Um, Joe studied Spanish and Japanese, so... Yeah. And I, I took a semester of Chinese, too. Yeah. But none of those might help you with no. French. No. Or... Uh, Badger says they have, like, 30 machines at the Brussels Pinball Museum. Yeah, that's consistent that's with what cool. I'm seeing on the map. That's cool. Yeah, so... We know they haven't gone downhill too far since you went. thing is with Brussels, they speak a lot of French here, says Awkward One. Luna Sapphire says, are we, should I still say setting up stream? I mean, we're still uh, 20 away from our uh, first goal, so I guess we're not really set up yet. Yeah. We're not really set up. I hope we're set up to succeed. Yeah. But we're usually set up to fail. Do you, do you, um, do you know the chords offhand to that When Will My Stream Begin song? The Tangled one. I mean, it's been years since you recorded that, so I understand if not. Um, uh, how about I pull up the chords for, for the Tangled song? Tangled song. Yeah, that makes sense. When, is, when, will, when will my, my life, life begin? begin? Yeah, the stream takes a while to set up here. Mm -hmm. Uh you know what? I really don't want to dig out all this blackstone, so I'm just going to put in uh, some TNT. Oh, I shouldn't do anything with TNT while I still have the sponges, because they're very rare and expensive. Chloe the Great and Powerful tips 14 and says, All right, I'm heading out, but I'll help you on the way out. Thank you, Chloe the Great and Powerful. That puts us six away <laughs> Thank from you, our goal of 100, our first goal of 180. Uh, so that's gonna we bring us are six up. away. Thank you for being great and powerful. So great, so great and so powerful. We are in awe of your greatness and your power. Um, uh, Emily Rattini says, "I'm trying to start on a drawing of Joe, but I'm a complete loss as to what my approach should be." Uh, I would say pick whatever artistic style that you want to explore but haven't had an excuse to. Like, if there's something yes. where you're like, I wish I got an assignment where I work with pastels. Yeah, or have I ever seen a cubist rendering of Joe Hills? I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's like a billion of those, so don't actually do that one, but like whatever... There is are a billion of those? Whatever's like... Yeah, something along those lines. Th that's the thought process. Mm, I see. Yeah, I mean, well, it's a cubist game. Oh, uh, well, I didn't mean it in that sense, but now I take your meaning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being obnoxious. <laughs> and that's why I have to get paid to hang out. That is. <laughs> um, well, let's see. Here's the issue. Is I need to find the lyrics to this song. Um, Unless you know them off the top of your head. 8.30 p.m., the usual streaming setup. Turn on the lights, make sure they're bright and gleam. Title and tweet, pour water tank top and chroma. 
OBS seems all set, so I click start the stream and then I'll pause, fold in, and open VLC. I'll pick two songs before lay your head down and dream. I'll say that's us to y'all. Joe Hills from Tennessee. Folks asking when will my stream begin? Um, then I guess it goes something like after how to eat its titles and. Chests, wait, after how Chests are breaking? T tools breaking. Tools breaking. Um, pickaxe will poof while talking to you, professional Minecrafter here, there's no mistaking. So I click crafting quick anvil time enchant pick, then I'll replace the books in random chests with K. I'll tour my winery, I'm sure there's blocks somewhere, and then I'll hush. Hush and hush and hush, chat swears. Not any closer to recording. Folks keep wondering and wondering and wondering. I thought they keep and asking and asking. They probably do. Keep when asking. will my stream be? <laughs> uh, I know this part. Seriously, y'all, I need to record next episode. Oh, I don't know all of I've been working toward I can't edit without footage, no. Once I'm all geared up, maybe we can start the show. Um, so somebody says, uh, but chat would never swear. No, they swear constantly. I'm just banning people. Constantly. Constantly. Um, Damn it, chat. Yeah. Badger says, I want to go back to Brussels. None of my favorite bands are touring. Oh, no. Hmm. I've never been to Brussels. I'd go to Brussels. I've never been to Brussels either. Or either. I've, I've had their sprouts. Yep. Those are good. Yeah, I was actually thinking, like... You know, I remember when I when I was a kid, Brussels sprouts weren't very good, but like maybe they my They just palate... weren't prepared well when we were kids. <laughs> Everything was a steamed vegetable when well, we were kids. That's what I thought too. And I was kind I of was from like, like a can. They Everything were, was canned. They and weren't steamed. prepared well, they weren't they weren't seasoned well, blah blah blah. Yeah, weren't and seasoned and at you all. You know what? My my tastes have evolved. So, you know, it's a combination of all these things. I was wrong. That's actually not it. What was it? Um, they, they've got a new, gen, like, they genetically, uh, selectively bred Brussels sprouts, sprouts really well in the last, like, 15 years. And so now wow. the previous most popular strain of Brussels sprouts from when we were a kid, they don't even sell anymore, basically. Oh, my gosh. They're, they're because just, I remember, like, they're just better on, on, like, TV shows as a kid, like, if there was going to be, like, a gross vegetable that a kid doesn't want to eat, it was always Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Timmy, eat your Brussels sprouts. Oh, no, Mom, I don't want to eat Brussels sprouts. They're you, disgusting. Timmy, you gotta eat them. I don't wanna. Yeah, so so that's basically, um, yeah, that, that whole thing is just no longer relevant because wow. they just made better Brussels sprouts. What else have they changed? You know, without us knowing. Well, let's see. We is noticed corn different. We noticed the phone booth thing, so I don't think that we counts. noticed. Yeah. Um, are bananas different now? I don't know. Badger says that I absolutely love Brussels sprouts when I was a kid, but now they're too mild, so I pan fry them with sage. Oh, okay. You gotta bring that. You gotta bring that bitterness so, so back. So one person who liked them, uh, is gonna is disappointed. But okay. Um. Yeah. But why don't they just sell two varieties? You know. Well, I don't like, think they could. Is the thing Brussels like, sprout classic? Like most people just don't want them. Oh uh, yeah. You know, like it's not people worth. Don't want the bitterness. It's not worth trying to sell them. Hey, we got twenty from Jeanette who says spent ten minutes trying to come up with a witty message, but oh well. So that's, that was pretty witty. That's gonna actually get us over it the was top. Meta. So we were at 174. Over we're, the top, but will it bring us over the hill? Yeah, it, we're, we're up to 194, so... There you go. If you want to start running up that hill, uh, now is the time, Quinn. I'm going to turn off my in-game sound so that people can enjoy this. It doesn't hurt me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That was Quinn Hills performing Kate Bush's Running Up That Hill. 
as popularized by Netflix's Stranger Things and also a bunch of stuff 80 years ago. And yes, the 1980s. <laughs> yes, which actually weren't 80 years ago now. <laughs> Thank goodness. Close. Yeah. Getting there. Oh, no, I'm old. No. I'm melting. I'm melting. What a world. I know. I, that was amazing. I I did not try to sing along with that one because I knew I would only ruin it. <laughs> But if you want to hear the Beetlejuice perform a song, we are going to be doing that. Friends in Low Places. Friends in Low Places. By Garth Brooks. If by you'd Garth like to hear Brooks. Joe ruin a song. If you want to hear me ruin a song by Garth Brooks, uh, we're going to be doing Friends in Low Places. I'm excited. At uh, 360. 360. How far are we away from that now? Uh, we are at 194. Mm. So I should mention... Oh, you know what? I have actually failed to post the... T I can tell... Because when I post, when I tried to paste in the the tipping link, it put in the foreign currency symbol for like uh, Evan Netta's tip. I have not reposted the link since Evan Netta. People have just been tipping anyway. Oh, thank okay. you, y'all. Sorry about that. Sorry, Quid. You you drove all the way over here, and then I'm like too dumb to post the link. My bad. So thank you to everybody who tipped uh, despite maybe just my too failures. tired to post the link. Uh, yeah. I've been actually I've been trying to sleep better. Yeah. With how's that working? Uh, I'm, I am sleeping better, and I'm definitely slightly more functional. But like the, the trade-offs in terms of my productivity haven't. Like in the long term, it's the right thing to do to try and get my sleep schedule back on track. Mm -hmm. But it's really cutting into my editing time because it used to be that like the day I put out a video, usually I would just like get f six hours less of sleep the night before just mm. have a bunch of red bulls and so i keep trying to find time during the day to edit but it's like i get 45 minutes here 45 minutes there <laughs> but i'm i'm hoping when corinne's gone over the summer it'll be easier to just get like five straight hours than it is right now is that your goal for sleep per night five hours no no no. i'm saying like when i edit Oh, five straight hours of I, editing. I would be skipping five hours of sleep usually on the nights oh, that I was doing I a big editing push. I'm trying mm. to not do big editing pushes and instead, like, find time during the day to edit. But I, it's harder than I expected to find time during the day to edit. That's It's hard to find time at all. Yeah. So, a little bit behind on my next video, but yeah. it'll be okay. But, like... I found time in a bottle. The, uh, the other thing is, too, I'm, I'm realizing I was in a lot of sleep debt, kind of. So, like, I'm, like, one of the reasons it's hard... It's one of the debts you can never repay. Well, no, I mean, well, I don't mean, like, directly, like, um... Like, I had a bunch of stuff around the apartment that I was like, I'm too tired to do that right now. Mm -hmm. But as I've been getting more energy and I'm sleeping more, I'll sit down to edit and be like, oh... I've been putting off cleaning this, uh, or not cleaning, like, but I don't want bugs, so, like, the, we keep the place clean, but, like... Yeah, this is why we get ants. Yeah, like, like in terms of tidiness, though, I'll be like, oh, I was gonna put that tripod away, uh -huh. right? But I was too tired, and it's been there for eight months now. <laughs> like, Right, it's one of those things that's on the lower end of the priorities, you know. Yeah, but I'm like, well, I have the energy to do it now, so I should probably just do it now. So I've been, like, working through this backlog of, like, apartment tasks that I was, like, too tired to knock out. And I'm catching up, and I think that once I get caught up on that, that's also going to help me, you know, just feel more positive on the whole about everything. Yeah, I get that. Hey, Joe, I think we've got another tip. Woo! Uh-oh. I clicked the wrong thing. It disappeared. Now there it it's is. back okay. again. Shifty Pumpkin writes 20 and says, Good morning, Quinn. Also, Joe is here. Uh, why, why is he here? Why? Yeah, that's that's how Corinne <laughs> feels anytime you and the other cool adults are around. Shifty pumpkin. So rotating us to two te or 214. Yeah, I'll be like, hey, I'm looking forward to hanging out with you and everybody tonight. And she'll be like, yeah, that's great. And then we get there. And she's like, okay, Dad, I want to hang out with the cool adults. <laughs> like, these are my friends. Like, I want to hang out with them, too. <laughs> Dad, you're cramping my style. <laughs> she just... She just longs to be around cool 
badass female role models, that's all. Yeah, and that's good, and I want to encourage that. So, like, that's why I haven't pushed back too hard on this, but it is kind of like, I'm not gonna get to see you all summer. Can we hang out some? Oh. No. <laughs> no. No, I think it's good for Corinne to get to hang out with people, especially, like, you know, like, Amanda's an actual attorney, and, like, uh, you know, it's good for her to hang out with people who have all sorts of different professional backgrounds besides my own. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, see what the options are, talk to yeah. people. I'm a professional professional. Yay. I don't think that she necessarily thinks I'm that uncool, like, more than a normal kid. All kids think their parents are uncool to some degree. I no, think, it's I, not like she rejects you in every interaction she has with you. It's just more that, like, uh, we spent so much time together during the pandemic, especially, that, yeah. like, you know, when she has the opportunity to not, <laughs> she's like, ooh, I, this is something, I don't know how many of these I'm going to get. Let's, let's get as many of these interactions with these other people as possible. That's and, fair. And I'm like, uh, yeah, no, we're, it's not going away, but, you know. Yeah, because I had, I had a friend come to pinball last night, and then Corinne was like, Oh, I know all I know all the pinball women, so let me take you around and introduce you to them. Did she actually So she did that? Did she yeah. actually introduce them? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's very cute. I heard her I, I heard her say that, but I didn't know that she had actually followed through on it. She did, yeah. Oh well that's that's great, because like um one of our friends from high school just moved back into back to Nashville. Or moved to Nashville, because I guess she wasn't here. But yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, exactly. But yeah, one of our friends from high school moved to Nashville, and so uh, it's a great way to meet people, like going to your local pinball tournaments and stuff. Yes, but head no, to your local pinball establishment um, to make friends and influence people. <laughs> well, hopefully, every hopefully everybody thought that was cute and not like <laughs> presumptuous, because I don't know how tactful Corinne is at butting in on adult conversations that aren't mine. Because like oh, what, if, I mean, if I'm it's having coming a, from like a ten year old, so I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I know that if I'm having a conversation with somebody, she'll just walk right up and be like, "Dad, I need chips." And I'm like, "Uh, <laughs> you can have." She chips, has a direct but, like, approach. I appreciate that. <laughs> you you can have chips, but like, that's not the best way to go about it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, she needs to work on her segues. You know, she she yeah. should walk up and like, uh, you know, continue and, like, and uh, kind of thread her chip wand into the conversation somehow. Oh, yeah, I'm worried about TSMC, too. But, you know, speaking of chips... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I was good. But, yeah, I, hopefully uh, hopefully she was uh, respectful of people when she was doing that, because I, I don't want a bad first impression for Tiff. She she was she respectful, was. yes. Okay, great, great, great. Ooh, what time do we have to wrap up by today? Oh, uh, we've actually got another hour. We've got another hour to Yeah, we got to wrap up at 11.15. Another hour to reach our goal. Uh, Luna says, 10-year-olds are supposed to be presumptuous. It's developmentally appropriate. Yes, it is. But I also, you know, explained to my daughter, like, hey, when we're hanging out in a space with, uh, that's, like, not a kid's event, mm -hmm. you know, you need to try to hold yourself to a higher standard so that way you're welcome back, you know? Yeah. Because, um, like, if people were like, hey, Joe, you, you got you to gotta start getting a babysitter. Your kid is, you know, not uh, 
behaving. Mm -hmm. You know, if if it's like, well, she's acting like a 10-year-old, that's fine, but, you know, this isn't necessarily an event targeted for 10-year-olds. She's welcome if she behaves herself, but if she doesn't, you need to find a babysitter, you know? Yeah, I get that. So, you know, and, I, and I'm very upfront with her about this. You know, it's like, hey... Is, this is this is a different type of space, and you got to act respectfully in a way that you might not have to otherwise. But that's good practice, you know. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, she's been really good about that. <laughs> did, did you have it? I'm wondering what was her what was her segue for this? Was she just like, "Hi, this is my dad and Quinn's friend." I mean, she would find people like at moments where they were just like by themselves. So oh, okay. it was like she would go up and say like, "Hey, Meet blah blah blah. Yeah. She hasn't played a lot of pinball, but she likes it. That's cool, you know? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good way to do it. Well, I'm glad that Corinne handled that well. Yeah, she handled it well. Okay, so let's go ahead and scoop these up here. Here is someone you simply must meet. Yeah, that's how she introduces. Yeah. I have someone you simply must meet. She's a fellow woman, <laughs> like yourself, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> there, you have things in common already. <laughs> that was... I see this budding friendship has begun. <laughs> that was the other thing I was worried about. <laughs> was her just being like, she's a girl too. <laughs> but that's cute for no, a ten-year-old. Oh, I, I know it's cute. I know it's cute, but, uh, you know. I don't want our mutual friend to be so embarrassed that she doesn't want to come back either, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm fine with my child embarrassing me. I'm less fine with my child embarrassing our friends, right? You know, like it's mm -hmm. different. But yeah, I'm I'm really uh, I, I I know that I'm expressing a lot of doubt and concern here, but on the whole, <laughs> I'm very very thrilled with how well Corinne has yeah. been uh, handling things socially, because um, her mother and I are both socially awkward in different ways, and it seems to have evened out with her, where she's better at a lot of this stuff than either of us were. Yeah. Um. Yeah, she definitely seems uh, less socially aloof than you did at that age. Mm -hmm. And, like, she's observant and picks up on things. So even if she's not necessarily learning social skills 
from you. I'm sure she's learning some from you, but she's probably like sees how other people interact and, and learns from that. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. Well, and that's why it's so great to have a place I can take her where she's not just around kids all the time. Right. Because, like, there's a lot to be learned from your peers, but there's also something to be said from giving kids opportunities to learn from uh, folks who are at different stages in their lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is just clearly under the ocean at this point. An ocean of problems. Yep. Yeah, see so this this ravine here is way too big. But that's kind of out of the way enough that I don't think I necessarily even need to drain that. I'm just trying to kind of figure out where the boundaries are that uh to keep it from flooding in when we are digging. That's fair. But, you know, and this is one of those things, too, where, like, having spent a lot of her, uh, I guess, uh, first and second grade year at home, you mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm very pleased to see how social, uh, how well she's adapted in general. Um, Kids are resilient like that. They bounce back. They bounce Give back. him six weeks, he starts talking again. <laughs> Uh, Badger says, I have far too many undealt with childhood issues to be to be comfortable introduced like that. Oh, so if Corinne walked you around and was just like, uh, like after, after the, um, uh, the immigration paperwork goes through or whatever and gets approved, you'd be uncomfortable with Corinne being like, have you met my dad's fiance? <laughs> I will warn her that you are not comfortable no with that. No introductions. Well, I mean, there's a big difference between randomly, like, being in a game with somebody and be like, oh, hey, you know, oh, look. Oh, for sure, and then being put on the spot, yeah. Yeah, because, like, that's the great like, thing uh, about the tournaments is you're you're incidentally introduced. Right. Uh, during the course of the tournament, just as you're assigned into games with people. Yes. So you don't really need to force it like that. Right. And, and now, for a badger who needs no introduction. Badger says yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Corinne is definitely very eager for your return, Badger. I think everyone Everyone, We all are. <laughs> I am. We're all eager here. And if, if there's somebody here who isn't eager, then I, I don't ever want to speak with them again. Yeah. Just says I haven't met an uneager hills yet. Yeah. Yeah, we do have a lot of cousins. Yeah, you haven't met our fifty cousins. Even yeah. we haven't met all of our cousins. Yeah. Uh, no, I think I have. Oh, you think so? I haven't met all of their kids, but no, I've I've definitely over the course of my life, I've I would say I've met every cousin. My life. 
I've met cousins. I don't think I have. I don't know. I don't know if. I wonder how many of them even like know that uh, that I exist. I don't know. I don't know. I got a tip for ten rolling in here, or we got a tip for ten because they're splitting it. This yeah, we do. Robert says, "Glad to have you. Keep me company." On my lunch break, y'all look good today. Thank oh, you. Thank you, Robert. That's going to put us uh, at 224, even closer to our goal of 360. If we hit 360 by 1115, the Beetlejost is going to perform Friends in Low Places by D Garth Brooks. Sure is. We have a little, a little less than an hour now, but that's still plenty of time. It's still plenty of time. It's almost an hour left, so I'm confident. Hi, confident. I'm Quinn. Hi, Quinn. Badger says, I have four cousins. Maybe two more. Yeah, that's always weird when families don't, like, talk to each other intentionally. Like, our family, like, I just, I think it's just because I don't use Facebook and they all use Facebook for everything. <laughs> but, like, our parents keep up with the rest of the family. There's not, like, people mm -hmm. are cut out or whatever. No. Yeah. Um, Vin Shoken says, I accidentally set my iPad down, upside down, and came back, and it didn't look too wrong, because y'all were basically right side up. Thank you, Vin. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vin. Yeah, I had that experience watching the show Silo w when I was doing laundry. I have heard of this. Yeah, I know. We told that anecdote last week, though, so we don't need to <laughs> go back into it. But We've told it over and over. Oh, Badger says it's because of the adoption angle. Oh, that makes more sense. I was thinking you're not sure about your dad's side of this. Okay. Vin doesn't talk like that. Vin sounds like a Mistborn. Wait, do Mistborn from the book Mistborn talk differently than everybody else? Because, like, I thought, like, you should be able to hide if you were a Mistborn. Like, do you have to do special speech training to not sound like a Mistborn at that point? Hmm. What does a Mistborn sound like? I, I don't remember there being... I am a Mistborn! I am born of Mist! You know, maybe they maybe they sound like Marcel the Shell. I'm laughing just thinking about them. <laughs> like, okay, so what do we, what do you need to know about Mistborn to make jokes? Uh Mistborn have special cloaks and they can eat any kind of metal and do special magic. Like and but the different kinds of magic um do um I do magic and eat metal. Yeah, depending on what metal Alum aluminium. I eat aluminium. That's actually the worst one. Is it? Yeah, it's really bad. They're not supposed to eat that one. They'll they'll have bad trumps. Oh no. My tummy hurts. Oh, I'm a mishborn who ate aluminium. I ate too much aluminium last night. Classic mistake. I had aluminium casserole. I did. My doctor says I need to get my iron up. So this morning I had iron and coke, chromium steel. Really? 
It sounds like you're living that Allentown life. No, I'm living here in Allentown. And they're closing all the factories down. What are they doing out in Bethlehem, then? They're killing time. Are they filling out forms? They're standing in line. Oh. You know, our fathers fought the Second World War. Spent they their weekends on the Jersey Shore. You know, that was where they met our mothers in the USO. Ask them to dance. And dance with them slow. Now we're living here. In no. Allentown. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're doing, but it was fun. <laughs> and scene. Yeah, that's, 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 that's enough. We're done that. with that. That's yeah, enough for that. We're all we're all good here. And we're finished here in Allentown. When the, when the chat isn't commenting at all on yeah, a yeah. bit we do, I yeah. know it's a good bit. Yeah, I know that they really love it. We had a good bit of that, and now we're done. Yeah, exactly. When when nothing is being said, it's a good sign. says that's the best thing that I heard today 10 out of 10 Alaska Fredo says yes Poe 13 has triple clap they like us they really like us we accomplished something with that one I will keep eating my aluminium What would you what would you season aluminium with? What do you think? Oh boy, um, I imagine it. I imagine it has a bitterness to it already. I right? mean, any time that I've actually like put aluminium, so I cook it in some oil in my mouth. Yeah, it's always been because like something like burned to it, like like cheese. Like, what about any time you've sipped on a beer can? Weren't you tasting aluminium in your mouth? Yeah, I guess that's true. I was gonna say I don't actually usually drink beer in cans, mm. uh, but I do occasionally have soda, soda in cans. There you go. There's something. But like even then, the problem is it's uh, I don't like rinsing out the cans for the recycling, mm. and so I try to just buy two liter bottles. Yeah, um, that's fair. It's easier to rinse, eh? Well, yeah, and you don't generate as much like. Because, like, the apartment here isn't as bad as the last one, but the last apartment I lived in, the recycling was just overflowing constantly. Uh, here, it's not... It still happens, but not as bad. Sure. Um, but, so, yeah, like... I was, Needed a can crusher, did you? Yeah. But even with a can crusher, like, you're better off just getting the two-liter bottles at that point when you have to deal with it. Yeah. You might as well get a Wesley crusher at that point. Okay, this seems to be an underwater cave. Oh. Someone says canned drinks usually have a lining to keep it from impacting the flavor. Well, do they put the lining on the outside, too? Because your lips go on the outside. I think that was more the question. Mm, good question. And do they sell an optional can without the lining if I do want that metallic taste? Yeah, I think uh, I think the problem with that is it actually like makes the, the contents more likely to like get botulism if you don't have that. Mm, I think you actually like need that. Yeah, and I don't need botulism. Yeah, 
got enough. I don't bots. know that anyone does. Got enough bots in chat sometimes. We don't yeah. need bots yeah. and cans. Mm -mm. Bots and cans and bots and cans and bots and cans. Got bots and bands in my kitchen. Oh. So Kindle has made a joke about Bubba Hotep. I think that's a Bruce Campbell movie. Isn't it is a it? Bruce Campbell movie. I yeah. haven't actually about seen Elvis. It. I actually haven't seen it either. Yeah, probably should. That's that's probably like a big gap in our Bruce Campbell uh, knowledge base. Yeah, probably. I still haven't been to that new tiki bar. Oh, next to No Quarter. Yeah, me neither. What's it called Hubba Bubba or something? Hubba Bubba. Hubba Hubba or something. Hubba Hubba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they actually had the Elvis impersonator at good. that uh, wrestling thing. Oh, wow. I was like, why is there an Elvis impersonator here? Oh, oh yeah, because of the... Because of the Hubba Bubba. Yeah. Bubba. That makes sense now. Because, like, Elvis impersonators are one of those things that I think used to be super common, but nowadays yeah. just kind uh -oh, of Oh, Badger's out. yelling at us in disbelief. You haven't seen Bubba Hotep? No. No. Bubba Notep. It's just never come up. <laughs> never come up. Mm -mm. It, wasn't a, it wasn't a Sam Raimi movie, so... Badger says it's the most Hills-esque movie ever made. I wonder what that means. Yeah, and I also wonder, like, if we did watch it, if it would, because we have strange expectations, if it would just, like, you know, we would just guess everything that's going to happen next and be like, mm. yeah, okay, that's yeah, not that's what very, I would do. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I would do. Okay, I've watched film this to be choice surprised. is the choice I would make. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Badger it says might it might out. cancel out. Exactly. Yeah. Hills v. Hills. Hills v. Hills. You're better that way. Not when you're trying. Bubba Hotep. Because Bruce Campbell's in it. You worry there might not be anything at all inside. But that you're worried. Should tell you that's not right. You had it harder than anyone could know. So hard to let it go. But it's your life. You can decorate it as you like. Imitating something you think you saw. Ezra Manning says, Oh, I never ordered this. Oh, I love Evil Dead too. Oh, do you like Evil Dead 1 not as well, or just Evil Dead 2? What about Evil Dead 3? Army of Darkness. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that got me interested in the uh, seeing the new Evil Dead movies, because I was like, I don't know if I want to yeah, watch those. Yeah, I want to try those. I just haven't seen them yet. So There's one that came out in 2013, and, and then there's one that came out this year that people are raving about. Yeah, and I was like, I don't really know if I... Like, I, I don't know if I want to watch a remake or, a, or whatever. Apparently, remember in uh, Army of Darkness when he's like, What? Three books. Nobody ever told me something about. Nobody said anything about three books, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like okay, like when the when the um when that 
other remake came out a few years back, it's like, wait, how is the Necronomicon there? It's supposed to be somewhere else. Apparently, this new movie kind of Necronoma retconned it so that the new movies are about the other books. Oh. So, so there's... So there's the book from the traditional series, and then there's the other two. Is there still a character named Ash, or is that different? Is it some other character? I I, I don't know about the new ones. Yeah. But, mm. No, I, I think I think it's supposed to be new characters. Oh okay. But, um, because it it could be that you know the, it's like the Legend of Zelda where there will always be someone named Ash. Yeah. And and the book. The Necronomicon is always present. Because I wouldn't call each Zelda game a reboot. But it kind of is. Yeah. We could uh, possibly do a Bubba Hotep movie night, too, with the Discord. Yeah. Because, like, I usually do a lot of those when Corinne's away. Um... Which will happen soon. Because the problem uh, is, yeah, I know. I, the problem is that because of the uh, European crowd, we can't do the the movie watching like actually at night easily. That's okay. Um, but like, I then we can watch it during the day and then go hang out somewhere else. At, oh, exactly. At night. But but what I'm saying is that with Corinne, like I like to watch the movies on the uh, the actual TV for these. Sure. And so doing horror movies, like, hey, I'm watching something scary. You're not allowed to watch seems kind of rude like when she's here you know true so you could yeah you could even come over to my place i got the the big screen and the speakers oh that'd be fun uh glam pixie says marvel did that with the dark hold that's actually why i didn't see that wanda movie because i was like what agents of shield already did the dark hold and they're just the dark hold yeah they're just uh like they're just un uh what do you call it uh Oh, they're, I, they're uninspired, oh, uncontinuitying something. Oh, like discontinuity. Yeah, they're disconning it. Discon. And like, I kind of feel like when a show does that, that's fine. I understand creatively why they need to do that sometimes. But when when a, when I'm like really invested in a series or something, yeah. and they do that, what that tells me is. I need to take a break from it until it's over and find out, like, ba basically, I, I don't want to get super invested in something if they're going to keep re resetting it in the middle. And so I need to wait until it's over and then check out reviews and find out, like, okay, was that worth it? Because mm -hmm. otherwise, mm -hmm. if, like, I just, um, if somebody's going to, move something while I'm trying to work on it, I'm going to wait till they're done moving it. If yeah, somebody's going to somebody's going to change something about like something I'm enjoying in the middle, right? Right. Like I'm going to be like, "You know what? I don't really know if that's f y y I, there was something here that I really liked that I felt like was a good fit for me and you're saying that wasn't a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you feel out what you're doing." And then I'll come back to it once you've felt it out. Because maybe the initial start for the the new thing will be rough, but they'll make it work. Or maybe I'll just end up madder and madder and be like, why am I even still watching this? I hate it now. Right? Exactly. So I'll just I'll just give them time and come back to it later. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons. I don't think I've actually watched anything Marvel since they did that Darkhold thing. Except for, well, we went to the Guardians thing. Uh, that was a birthday party for somebody. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was just like, you know what? I was really invested in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> I watched a lot of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And yeah. now they're just like, nah, we're going to retcon that. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. But like, I'll come back to this in a few years when you guys finish. Mm -hmm. Like, unless there's a social reason to go do it. Yeah, that makes sense. I'd, if they do make a Loki season two, I am curious about that. I might, I might give that a try. Yeah, I'd probably watch that. It was nice to see Owen Wilson at all. Oh yeah, again, I, I really liked. I feel Owen like Wilson he, he went away for a time. He was so good in Heat Vision and Jack. I'm glad he's getting more like. Yeah, and that TV show was work. never picked up. No, but like, yeah, like he he does his. Uh, you know, he's not somebody who can only do film.
Lakshmi 13 says, I only know him from Cars. That's right, he was in that movie, Cars. Oh, was he? I yeah, haven't seen it. Yeah, he's the lead. He, he plays, uh... I never saw the, the Cars movies, but I think the character's name is Steve McQueen. I thought it was Lightning McQueen. Yeah, that's probably Maybe it. it's Steve Lightning McQueen, like that's his nickname. That might be... Like I said... He plays the car it. in Cars, yeah. I am the titular car. I'm the titular car, yeah. In Cars. Which... Uh, you want to make you want to make cars four without me? I am the car, which in a way is is very adjacent to Heat Vision and Jack. yeah. In Heat Vision and Jack, he played a motorcycle, so like that's not surprising. He would be good in cars. Exactly. I get it. Uh, It's a very interesting story if you look into it. I, I don't care quite enough about cars. I've seen a lot of theories. Uh, but, like, there's all... Yeah, the, like, the cars lore. People mm -hmm. occasionally will go on these rants on Twitter about, like... People will talk... People to, to do, debate about, oh, there had to be a Cars 9-11. Yeah, like... A Cars Hitler. Yeah, there, there was a Cars Jesus because there's a Cars Pope. But there was also a Cars Pope who got shot because otherwise the Cars Pope wouldn't be driving around in a bulletproof Cars Pope mobile, which is, like, a larger car. Mm hmm Like, it's just like, wow. I'm glad that people really are enjoying this, but, like, I don't, I don't feel like this is for me. I don't... <laughs> Cars, not for me. I prefer mass transit, whether it's in Massachusetts or not. Yeah, like uh, Thomas the Tank Engine. There's an anthropomorphized. Well, well, but that takes place like explicitly in our universe, I think. Like I don't. Oh, like, you're right. Because there's, saying there's it, people uh, in it. Yeah, there are people in it. But like, in cars, it's like this alternate reality where all people are cars. Mm. All people are cars. Yeah. Imagine all the people driving down the street. Ooh, ooh. You may say there's cars heaven. And it is a lot of fun. But yeah. Wait, so... So real John Lennon was imagining there's not a heaven, but Cars John Lennon is imagining there is a real heaven? Well, I mean, it's a... You know, there are going to be some divergences in the timeline because, you know, they're cars. So it can't be exactly identical to ours. Oh, okay. Well... Yeah, I gotta say, one of my favorite uh, Quantum Leap things was when he proves that he's from the future by singing Imagine. Mm hmm. Because he's just like, I can prove I'm from the future. I'll sing a song. Would you like to hear a John Lennon song? Yeah, I'll sing a John, Lennon song, yeah, sing a John Lennon song you've never heard. That you know I'm not capable of writing. I could Because I'm your brother. I could never write this John Lennon song myself. Right. Yeah. Because I'm your kid brother. Well, he's older, isn't he? he he's he's older. singing it to his sister. He's singing it to his sister, but yeah, yeah like, and she freaks out. That's like, yeah, that's like an incredible way to prove you're from the future. Right? I, I was actually thinking about time travel productivity methods earlier. Like, ideally, like, there's always that, that thing like, oh, if you know who's going to win the World Series, you can make some money on betting or whatever. Sure. But, like, if you knew how to make slightly more efficient LEDs, mm. right? Mm -hmm. If you just, like, within our lifetime, LEDs have existed the entire time, but at first they were only red. Well, at least within my lifetime. They might have had sure. more colors by the... But, like, you know, if I basically wanted to time travel proof myself within my own lifespan... Like, 1986 on, I get thrown back in the past. Just memorizing a bunch of things about how LED's uh, progress was made. Right. And then just go back in the past. Because a lot of it was, like, relatively simple stuff. It was just like, oh, you just needed the right ratio of this to this. So you go mm -hmm. in and you get a patent on that. Right. And that's one of those things where, 
like instead of being like, oh, hey, this guy is a, you know, got lucky on the World Series. Because I don't want to get lucky on the World Series. And actually, it turns out maybe bookies will break your legs if you win too much money, <laughs> right? Like. Yeah. Uh, whereas, like, okay, if I get a patent on LED technology, and I, I, I've got, like, 15 years of LED advances in my brain, it's like, okay, I can use that patent to hire some of the guys who came up with the other stuff later, and then feed them their own inventions early. Yeah. Be like, hey, can you, uh, look into this for me? I got a hunch that this might be a promising, you know, if I'm just, I'm just the LED hunch guy. Where I hire that kind of happens in uh, Star Trek Four with that uh, transparent aluminum. Yeah, yeah, he gives it to him early. Scotty gives it to him early. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, Scotty is explicitly trying to like get back to the present for himself, whereas to save the present. Whereas, sure. like in this scenario, I'm kind of assuming I'm stuck in the past, and it's like, okay, I need I need some sort of livable well, thing. Well, Scotty here. doesn't know. Scotty might be stuck in the No, past. no, no, but their plan is to get the whales and go back to the future. That They they have an intention of returning Wouldn't to the future. Wouldn't you have an intention to return to the future? I guess it would depend on how I ended up in the past, but like... Or maybe, you, maybe you'd have a Doc Brown sort of sentiment to... Like, all right, I'll just live out here just, in 1885. This is my life now. I mean, here's the other thing, though, is like having seen as much of what I have about like the creep fascism and stuff, like building an LED empire and maybe, you know, putting some political donations in the right direction. Like, maybe I could do some good in the past. Would that be enough to stop I don't the rise know. of global fascism? Probably not, but, like, I, I, I feel like I should give it a try. Yeah, that's that would, fair. That, uh, that'd be more interesting to me than going back to the present. Because I'll eventually catch up to the present anyway. True. What if you refused to sell your patent to governments you didn't like? I mean, they would just use the information in the patent to make the thing for free themselves. True. Like, they don't care. The, the patent means it's public knowledge how you did the thing. Yeah. And it doesn't sound like money is your primary no 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 i wouldn't be trying anyway. to get rich like like necessarily like for my own but like it's like if you're going to have the no some foreknowledge of the future you need the ability to to nudge things i think mm -hmm. or you should it's worth exploring seeing if you can nudge things but here's the other thing too is because of like um like compared to the sports betting thing where it's like well i know who won this super bowl well, if you if there's butterfly effect stuff from you changing the past at all, th you might only get away with one sporting event before that knowledge is all mm -hmm. now irrelevant. Yeah. Whereas like the physical things that make up how an LED is functions, yeah. the physics of that aren't going to change because you uh, went back in the past and bought a burrito. Yeah. Exactly. It's a good lava pool here. Just as a reminder, we are a uh, quarter from the hour. Uh, we have got a half hour left in the stream. And half an hour left in the stream. If we hit our $360 goal, I'll be singing Friends in Low Places as the Beetle Jost. We are at 224 now. Tips are welcome via paypal.me slash Joe Hill and YouTube Super Chat. Oh, yeah. Golden Lag Lagscast says what you're describing would make for a good book. Yeah, I know. I've been, I'm always thinking of story ideas, even if I don't have the time or energy to actually develop them. <laughs> but yeah, if you're writing a time travel book about somebody who's trying to take advantage of foreknowledge, foreknowledge of physics, mm. uh, mm -hmm. foreknowledge of material science. Yeah. Is way better than foreknowledge of future events. Because the second you start changing stuff, that, like, being able to say, well, I know who's going to win this election. No, you don't. You you know who won it last time. Exactly. Just the fact that you're here now and doing things 
could already have altered the course of that election, whether you said who wins it or not. Yeah. Unless you're the kind of person who believes that you always were going to travel back in time. Well, and you'd probably want to have some experiments that you could do. But, like, you know, that would be, pr like, it'd be pretty obvious the first time, like, an election I knew went one way went the other. Like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely changing things. Right. But, like... Or are there other time travelers changing things as well? Yeah. Unless everything I did was already supposed to happen. Well, the thing is, though, if I'm showing up with patents... Uh, for LED technology early, and I know when the original patents were made, uh -huh. right? It's like, well, in my timeline, these patents were in 1992, and I'm dropping them in 1989. Uh -huh. It's like, I get, there's proof there that I'm changing the past, that it's not, a, it's not a cycle if the patent for this very specific thing was granted three years early. Yeah. What about buying land with undiscovered oil reserves? Okay, that I can't buy a house. I can't buy a condo in our own timeline where I've been working and I have like a birth certificate and stuff. Yeah. Like I yeah, I wouldn't I I don't think that I could just uh I that wouldn't be my opening move, I'll tell you that. <laughs> like it's plausibly something that I could try later, but yeah, it's not. That's not a an opener. Yeah. Oh, use the LED money for that. Yeah, may, maybe. Yeah. Well, and there's also stuff with like photovoltaics. Mm-hmm. Um. So the thing with photovoltaics is that it wouldn't necessarily become as obviously commercially helpful until later. Right. But. You know, if you know, if you're already like known as a material science hunch guy, yeah, and you start coming in and like, hey, I'm gonna hire these people who are good physicists and sure. engineers to work on uh, solar panels and stuff early. Now, right. what's kind of, what's kind of like the sweet spot time wise to show up in where like everything you would need for LEDs is kind of like within your grasp anyway. Well, I, I picked LEDs in particular. The starting point for this for me was quantum leap rules. Let's say I go back within my within my lifespan. Oh, within your lifespan. Within okay. my lifespan, LEDs seem like the go-to thing because the advances are – they're super cheap to make if you know how to make them. That's why they're everywhere. Yeah. But figuring out the next advancement in them – was a material science challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the reasons solar panels aren't as good a choice because even though there might be more society altering, they're harder to spin up, whereas the LEDs are individually so cheap, right? Yes. Um, LEDs have, have taken over in a much bigger way than solar panels have. Yeah. Badger says, I just buy shares in Google and Apple. That's... Well, I guess my concern is, if I showed up as a 35-year-old adult in 1986, I, how do I... It's going like, to be a while. Uh, yeah, I need to get some sort of initial job. I need to have... How, how do I... Yeah. Like, how do you can I... Buy the comp you can buy shares in, in the fruit company, but I, the, I, the Google isn't there yet. Yeah, I'd probably buy shares in Apple with some of my money, but, like, the other thing is, though, I, I already like what Apple has done in general... So I don't want to n risk nudging them mm, by being a shareholder. Or yeah, having, having kind of any like influence on them. Like that gets yeah, I'd get nervous about that. Like whereas for, um, Sean says LEDs and solar panels are the same technology. Yeah, but what I'm saying is from a commercial standpoint, um, if you're trying to sell one of those two things in the late '80s, like. All sorts of electronics started incorporating LEDs, but not all of them incorporated. Fo like, just the ubiquity and the rise of the LED in our lifetime is, like, 
that's why that's what that would be what I focused on. Mm-hmm. Golden Lag says buying shares multiplies wealth, but you still need to have money in the first place. Yeah. Kindle says I'd buy a certain emerald mine in South Africa and shut it down. Well, but you're also handing that family a ton of capital at that point, so uh, mm-hmm. that 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 could be worse. I I don't know if I would take that gamble. Well, and then there's the you know if there's always gonna be an Elon Musk. Yeah. You know, so even if you take care of one Elon Musk, another Elon Musk will take its place and it's, and still buy Twitter and still be an obnoxious twat. Basil Hunter says my initial investment in Apple was only five thousand back in nineteen ninety six. Oh my That's a gosh. great segue into mentioning that uh, we're splitting tips today. Tips are welcome via PayPal.me slash Joe Hills and YouTube Super Chat. But uh, yeah, good foresight there, Basil Hunter. Yeah. As long as you didn't sell immediately after. And then I sold it in nineteen ninety seven <laughs> after losing a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, hey, we were what? What were we coming on to the iMac around that time? Oh, uh, in '97? No, I don't think. When they had the like neon back panels. I feel like that was like a little late, later. I feel like that was late '90s, 2000 ish. Mm. Was when the because that was it was after Pixar because Steve came back and launched the iMac. Right. Jobs in particular, not like Jobs. Steve Franks. He did the iMac, the iPod, the iPhone. Badger says the Centris in '97. What's what's his I don't name? I don't even Centris recognize. Is. Yeah, I feel like there was kind of my knowledge of Apple kind of jumps from like uh, the Apple II straight to the iMac. So, uh-huh. well, because. And, and Jobs left and, you know, worked on the the NEXT or whatever. And, you know, mm. did all well, the, then he went did to all Pixar. Pixar stuff. Yeah. So I don't know what, I don't know what Apple was. Maybe Apple was putting out the Centris. Badger says iMac came out in 98 pretty okay. soon after. Thank you, Badger. Thank you, Badger. Uh, Basil says, when Apple doubled, I sold a quarter of the shares to cover the original cost. Smart. Although, I don't know how soon that was. Because, mm. yeah, like, holding onto those longer might have been better. But, yeah, at least you got your initial money holding back if you needed it. to Apple shares pays off. You could do an entire, um... You know what we should look at? I'm not a financial advisor, and you should not heed anything I say. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. Um, there's almost... No CODs or bank orders. One number that I feel like would be a very Joe Hills number to know, but that I do not know... 42. ...is how many years mm. are spanned in the song We Didn't Start the Fire. Because... In terms of writing parodies, it would be particularly interesting to pick, like, for whatever that number is, for that anniversary of Apple, write a a parody mm. of We Didn't Start the Fire. Uh, My guess is around, like, 35 to 40 years. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Glam Pixie tips four and says, for laughter and entertainment. Thank you, Glam Pixie. That gets Thank us up to you, 228. Glam Pixie. You have the laughter. The laughter. We provide the entertainment. Woo. It goes from the 40s to the 80s, I believe, says Glam Pixie. Yeah, that's... 1949 that's to 1989. So that's... I feel like the, the last few years are kind of amalgamated because he's less interested in the present. He's not interested in Cola Wars. I can't take it anymore. He really can't. No. Yeah. 
so these are relatively shallow, so even though it's segmented here, I can kind of, or even though I haven't segmented this, I can kind of run through it fast enough to try to clean it up. Not great, but passable. Um, it, yeah, it was one year perverse at the beginning, but I feel like the last verse covers a few more years than usual. Last verse, same as the first. Lakshmi13 says, I graduated from high school in 96 and talks about Google and always make me feel old. What about Alta Vista? What Yay. about Ask Jeeves? I used to ask Jeeves everything. Let's ask Jeeves for Sonic the Hedgehog 3 uh, cheat codes. Let's ask Jeeves to give me Sonic the, three, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 for Christmas. Vista was the only way to search for images back in the day, says Badger. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Way back. Way back. I had to back. pull up Netscape Navigator. I still remember using MapQuest. MapQuest, yeah. And Dad being like, oh, this is sucks compared to road trips door to door. Because mm -hmm. our dad uh, ran a trucking company, so he paid for some really fancy trucking map software. Yeah. And he's like, oh, this is... It was basically Google Maps, but sure. like on a CD-ROM. It was it was on a CD-ROM. Uh, yeah, and we didn't have smartphones, uh, so you'd you'd have to print out your driving instructions. Yeah, but it, it did have all of the turn by turn. But it was basically yeah, like it had the, drive you, down such road for one mile, take a left on a blah blah blah. You, you know. could drag around the map too, which you couldn't do in uh, MapQuest. Like, basically, ev eventually Google Maps caught up with road trips door-to-door, -door, but, like, the other thing it had, too, was, like, you could say, hey, I need to avoid low bridges, I need to avoid anything, like, that's any bridges that aren't rated for trucks, that sort of thing. Yeah. But you could turn that off if you were, like, driving a smaller truck or had a lower weight limit or whatever. So, like, my dad used it for family vacations and stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Was the nineties? What a time! What a time indeed. Speaking of the time, we are fifteen minutes from the end of the show. So, if folks want to tip uh, and get us to three sixty, we are currently a hundred and thirty-two dollars away from that goal. Tips are welcome via paypalme Hills and YouTube super chat. Okay. YouTube Super Chat. Super Chat. Super, super chat, chat. Super Super Chat. YouTube Chat. YouTube Chat. Super Chat. Let's not forget the I'm Discord missing Carta so, so much. Chat. Yeah. Because my Carta parents. 96 is the one we had. Yeah, my parents could never afford to buy a physical encyclopedia, but the Encarta disc, that they could do. That was, that was our encyclopedia. Yep. And it was so good. I really. Uh, Kindle says that software was always out of date. I had one that didn't know the, how the Gulf War ended. The thing is, though, like, being able to give a kid an encyclopedia to flip through for research yeah. is more valuable than the internet. Because with the internet, they have to be individually evaluating every source they're looking at. Whereas it's like, okay, the Encarta CD-ROM set was vetted, you know. Right, and I don't look to my software to be perfect. I don't know how the Gulf War ended. Why should my software <laughs> why, should, why should my computer know how the Gulf War ended? <laughs> my computer's not better than me. It doesn't, it doesn't deserve to know how the Gulf War ended. No, it doesn't. Think of what it might do if it did know. Yeah, that's funny. Uh... Polio Merte says, military GPS is still separate. They could turn down the resolution on comedian GPS if need arose. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my friends uh, had the GPS where John Cleese would read all the directions and, mm. like, make snarky comments. 
Yeah. That guy. I, I miss uh, having GPSs where you could have, like, custom voices and stuff. I would, I would love to get a gig recording GPS voices. Or even if um even they if... should they should do that as like a an open source thing you know with Google Maps you can just upload your voice yeah. file or something. I was going to say that's actually something I would do like as like a a goal for the Patreon like hey if we hit x thousand a month I'll record the GPS instructions. Right. What you wouldn't want to do is have your voice digitized and captured by AI who then No, go I don't I don't read. want them to extrapolate don't it want out. That. I want to no. I want to make wanna, it. You want to sit there and record everything. Yeah. Like I understand like they're like and record every syllable possible that could combine into a street name. Well, no, what they do on those is they wouldn't say the name of the street. They would just say uh turn left here. I think mm, they would record stuff like turn left on Main Street. Turn right on Main Street. Turn left on First Avenue. Turn left on Second Avenue. Like they would record like the com the most common names, the numbers. Okay. They wouldn't record every sound in the English language and then yeah. allow them to be combined. No, I think they would record all the numbers for the interstates, though. You know, take the sure. ramp onto Interstate Fifty Five. Take the ramp onto exactly. Interstate Fifty Seven. You only need to go up to. Yeah. Uh. Robert is tipping 10, says, second time tipping because I need this cover in my life. That's right. If we hit that goal, got to get this cover in my life. we're going to do, be doing but Friends in Low Places with the Beatles Jost. That brings us up to 238. 238. And we got 10 minutes because then ten minutes we got to go pick up my daughter from school. She's got an early dismissal today. Yep. So we just need, what, 128? Yep. Uh, that Encarta game, Mind Maze, I, Badgers posted a picture of. Oh my of, gosh. This I is, love oh Mind Maze Oh my god, I haven't so seen much. this in years. That was so fun. Yeah, that, I, like, I, I, I wish they made more this. stuff like that. Like, back when Microsoft was cool. Back when Microsoft made cool things, instead of just buying them. Although I think they actually did buy the encyclopedia. Like, they didn't write yeah. an encyclopedia from scratch. They licensed an existing one now, and then paid people to exactly, update it. Exactly. They made cool things. Now they just make surfaces, which anyone can make a surface. So oh, got, look. I put a plank here's down a, on here's this. Here's a uh, table. All right. Yeah. Surface. And they make a box that has an X on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? You don't even need to be literate to do that. No, you really don't. You Anybody can, Anybody's anybody can put signing an X on a box. Signing any form yeah. can put an X in a box. Konami's Code of Coco Pie says they bought an encyclopedia. I that or they licensed it, but I think they found an encyclopedia that was going out of business and then hired somebody to update the articles was how they did in Carta. That that's yeah. I'm not sure I might not be remembering that correctly, Something but something else I really liked from that era yeah. was uh we had some interactive like comic book games like oh, Eat, Eat the, the Cat, Cat and there was a tick one too. Yeah, yeah. That was great. That was fun. Yeah, and, and I think some of that's still happening in, like, iPad app form. Sure. But, uh... I don't know. Felt different back then. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I really liked the interactive comics. Those were cool. And I think those were made by Fox... Fox was, Interactive. Yeah, yeah Fox Interactive, because so. they got the voice actors, I think, because that was that was the whole thing with CD-ROM, was all of a sudden we can do voice. Exactly. Which was, which was like, one of the uh, incredible things about the PlayStation 1, mm -hmm. using, using the disc media. Yeah, they had, had the real soundtrack on mm -hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Sega CD had 16-bit games with CD audio. Yeah. yeah, Sega CD as well. Sega was all about those console add-ons that financially didn't really pay off. Yeah. But the thing is, though, with stuff like that, if, if you kind of... Like, it's it sucks that they overextended themselves. For sure. But, like... But they also had... They had to compete with Nintendo. Yeah. 
Like, uh, unlike Sony and Microsoft, who basically just decided not to compete with Nintendo, they only compete with each other. They're like, every home will have a Nintendo Switch and either an Xbox or a PlayStation. <laughs> right. That's our goal. Yes. We're the other one. Yeah. You uh, will have a Switch, but let us be the other one. Whoa! Chad Whoa! rolling in and tipping 130 says, let's hear it. Let's hear it for Chad. Woo! Thank you, Chad. You are making our dreams come true. Woo! So, Woo! Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I need to do the... I'm, I'm doing the rotation, and I need to get the jacket on. That's. It's a shame that we don't have a good way for you to, like, reach over here and do this. If only had one of those big uh, reacher claw... Yeah, you could grab the jacket. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Grab it for you. No, it's fine. We're, we're, we're getting it. We're, we're down to 360... Or if and I had telekinesis. Up to eight. That's telekinesis, Quinn. Okay. <laughs> okay. So History since we since we gotta got get going lyrics. shortly, we should uh, probably jump sure. right in here. I'm gonna need to pull up the lyrics though. So, uh, uh, this is one of those songs I know so well. That, that like you don't know that I all. don't know the order. Like I'll just start. I'll do the same verse four times in a row because I'm like I forget which verse comes next. Sure. I like this verse. That's telequinesis, Kyle. <laughs> uh, you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Blame it all on my roots. I showed up in boots and ruined your black tie affair. The last one to know. The last one to show. I was the last one you thought you'd Did see there. See there. And I saw the surprise and the fear in his eyes when I took his glass of champagne and I toasted you, said, Honey, we may be through, but you'll never hear me complain because I got friends in low places where the whiskey drowned and the beer chases my blues away and I'll be okay. Yeah, I'm not big on Social graces, they all slip on down to the oasis. Yeah, I've got friends in low places. Well, I guess I was wrong. I just don't belong. But then, I've been there before. Everything's all right. I'll just say good night. And I'll show myself to the door. Hey, I didn't mean to cause a big scene. Just give me an hour, and then, well, I'll be as high as that ivory tower that you're living in. Because I've got friends in low places where the whiskey, whiskey drowns and the beer chases my blues away. Yeah, I'll be okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not big, big on social graces. graces. Think I'll slip on down to the oasis. I got friends in low places. Everybody. Oh, I've got friends. There's another verse. Oh, wait, there is? I guess I was wrong. Where is it? I just don't belong. I thought we just did that one. That's literally the verse I just did. Mm -hmm. Weird. My thing says Wait, it happens twice. It does? Okay. I'll do it again. Well, no, you don't have to. Let's do the chorus. Yeah. <laughs> I've got friends <laughs> in low places where the whiskey drowns and the beer chases my blues away. And I'll be okay. I'm not big on social graces. Think I'll slip on down to the oasis. Cause I've got friends in low places. I got friends in low places where the whiskey drowns and the beer chases my blues away. And I'll be okay. 
I'm not big on social graces Think I'll slip on down to the oasis Cause I got friends In the places Woo! <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I So that's the thing with reading the lyrics online instead of, like, pulling actual lyric sheets is, like, for all I know, maybe live he does do one of the verses twice, but, like, the, the one I pulled up. These chords are probably wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, wait, no, I don't know. Yeah, I was just like, I'm just, I'm just doing it. It's, it's the Beetlejuice. It's, it's its it's own thing. It's the thing. Beetlejuice. There, it's are, its no own thing. there are no rules here. No rules. It's like the Outback Steakhouse. Yeah, no rules, just right. Just right, isn't it? Epic steakies. But, uh... And then did the steakies. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Uh, it's a little bit more New Zealand with the stickies. Oh, I like stickies. Get a potato. <laughs> uh, he maybe uh, did. He maybe did what? No. He maybe did. Oh. Okay, so we actually do have to go get my kid from school. So we're going to wrap up here. Thank you again to Chad for putting us over the top with our goal today that was Thank you. deeply appreciated we we're splitting that 50 50 uh, if you enjoyed the show quinn will you be back here next thursday i should be unless there's some major reason not to be the, oh sorry there's my uh pickup career alarm should have been a doorbell <laughs> should have been the doorbell should have changed it no, that would have been a good call back oh, oh well gosh, I didn't now i know what to fix if we have time travel oh gosh <laughs> uh Okay, so, uh, yeah, let's see. I think we're going to go ahead and raid Music Man 1017 who's doing some chill, hardcore Minecraft. A little chill bit of an and hardcore. Moron. Love yeah. it. So we're going to... Uh, let's copy that URL it's for the YouTube channel. It's hardcore. Chat. And we're going to slash raid. Slash in the raid. I really wish slash raid accepted the URL. Like, it feels like they could yeah, parse out that the twitch.tv. Right, exactly. Uh, oh, yeah. I probably should not die from a creeper in, like, the but, last five seconds yeah. of the stream when we need to leave. Yeah. I guess we can't expect Amazon to do something. No. But, uh, anyway, yeah, when you get over there, our raid message is, how do y'all Joe and Quinn Hills raid here? Uh, just That's as a right. reminder, uh, you can find Quinn at twitch.tv slash redactedhills. Redacted Woo! Woo! And uh, Twitter, Redacted Hills. There's redactedhills.com, which has been pinned this entire time. If you com. want to commission music. Tumblr.com slash Quinn Hills. I heard that you had a really successful post on Tumblr the other day. You got like 10,000 likes or something. Uh, Not accurate. I, uh, I received 10,000 likes in total in all my time being on Tumblr. Where does it show that? I didn't Tumblr, even know like. That gives me a notification that was like congrats you've had 10,000 likes. Oh, I didn't know I didn't know it did that. But that's cool. Maybe you haven't had 10,000 likes. Yeah, maybe not. No, you or, definitely have. Or I had it like 8 years ago before they had that feature. That's I, I've probably had my what happened. Tumblr account yeah. for a long time. But anyway, when you get over there to Music Man say how do y'all Joe and Quinn Hills raid here. Until next time y'all, this is Joe and Quinn Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. And I'll find out Quinn. Keep adventuring. Keep adventure Quinn. Raid 